Just... One of my monitors Good isn't plugged in. What the fuck? Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> is it? I don't know, man. Is it? And we're about to play D&D, so it can't be a bad one. <clears throat> Yo, you can see this monitor on my webcam. Let me put some hentai on there real quick. Yo, go on. <laughs> go on. Go on. Good also evening, glass gamers. Repair, also glass replace. It do be Sunday. We're back with uh, Dungeon Select, second campaign, Elements of Kelbar, session 42. We're here. Not altered by autoglass. <laughs> the whole gang is here. Uh, Corbs, Laura, thanks for the subs. Um, you see that chip? A sharp jolt on the road could turn it into a crack. <laughs> oh, turn into my crack? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, dude, it's so, it's so weird to me how it's called car glass here. But auto glass over there. I feel like it should be the other way around. No. Yeah. You, call them, you call them cars. We call them autos. So I don't know why that's Do you know turned what? around. It's called different things in different places, and they each have an individual jingle. It's kind next of time the same you've melody. got like car glass for a font. Yeah. Next time you've got like five minutes to kill, go on YouTube and search up all auto glass national like tunes because there's a different one, and like some of them are hilarious. Yeah, I, I know Abby, all of company, but that company is called Car Glass here. But whereas yeah. you guys call cars cars and we call them autos. So surely the company name should about? be reversed. You know what I mean? Makes more sense. Yeah, like Auto Glass, auto -glass is a company it's... worldwide, but they operate under different names in different regions. Yeah. From the I... jingle they were singing earlier, I think even we have it, Soko, but here it's called Speedy Glass. Is it coming called, 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 called Auto Glass? It's called Auto Glass here. Yeah. That's but... so Stupid. It's weird. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Not actually Dragons. sponsored by Autoglass. <laughs> Could be though. You know. Could be. Could yeah. be. You know, Gavin from Autoglass, slide on my DMs, bro. I got you. <laughs> Cook them down to copyrights. Yeah, maybe Ecto. How's it going, Ecto? Good to see you, man. Copyrights focus groups. I've been seeing you like tweet a lot about dreaming about playing D and D, and then every time I I look at it on when I'm on the DS account, and I'm like eyes emoji but <laughs> we'll get you when on, I'm show on the show again, account, I just again look up at some point to ruin the algorithm. we'll get you on the show again at some point 100 no worries we got you down. um before we get into today's episode do we have any announcements <laughs> yes we do oh. uh in two weeks we'll be doing our uh our anniversary stream oh, of the, the the anniversary of 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 ds Hell yeah. Four? Five? Four years? Five years? Let's look this up. I, I feel like up. you guys should know. I should have looked this I'm up. I'm kind of ashamed that you don't. Four I feel years. like you should know the most. Dude. 2018 we started. I didn't it's play for like Four years. year anniversary know, exactly. of, of, of the conception of Dungeon Select. And I'm here to announce what we're going to be doing. Ooh. Oh. A little, a little tease. We're going to be Ooh. bringing back the, the, the crew from uh, Campaign 1. And... There's a couple of storylines that, uh, you know, are left unresolved, but I decided it is time to uh, just finish up one very close to a certain character in the group. Oh. We're going to go after Abran's killer. <gasps> oh, oh I'm excited. Man, I was really hoping it would be the arc oh. where Gen... <laughs> Of you know, it's really unfortunate that fade, he but... his, uh... <laughs> you know, So we're going to go after the man who killed Abran and got him to turn into what he became. You know, the, the, the fucking... Uh, what did I call the class again? Fuck. Ampia, the, the Death Walker. Death Walker. Ampia so, because that, that, was, that was one of the plot points that were kind of left unresolved towards the end of the campaign. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do that. We're going to find some closure for that part of... Uh, of Abren's, uh story, and with that, you know, just an unresolved plot point for the party as well. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's what I've decided to do, and uh, I think it's going to be fucking epic. I'm going to be start starting the, the writing process on that, and then what I want to do, and see if I can not over or underestimate how much time it's going to take, because that's always an issue. When I have to write something for, like, a one-shot, it's always really hard to guesstimate how much time things are going to take, so hopefully... Uh, Hopefully, you know, we, uh... Especially because we have to fucking relearn, like, level 16. Dude, I have to relearn all my spells. Uh, what I want to oh. do, I've as well, is because we ended that campaign when you guys were level 15? 16. 16? 16. 16. I don't know, I think right 15, before level 9 we... spells, I was kind of mad about it. Well, I want you guys to be level 18 when we start this, <gasps> so... Oh. You get some oh, new... we, we might have to come club have... on that, because I don't know if we got that far. Yeah, we will. We'll, uh, we'll take some time for that next weekend somewhere. We have, we have two weeks, so if we can just take some time next weekend, uh, Ethan, to uh, sit down for that. 
18. I yeah, can't. yeah, yeah. God, I then, uh, level but yeah, level 18, man. so you guys can level up your boys, and pretty much level 18 is when you get the final thing for your yeah. subclass as well, right? So you can just, yeah. you're gonna, you can go all out, you know what I mean? Unless we're uh... multi-class and then you gotta figure it out. <laughs> Unless you have multi-class, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, just, God, I've just to make it easy, oh. take like one level of each and just not decide. And then there you go. Uh, but yeah, so that's gonna be happening in two weeks. It's gonna be, uh, I'm, I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it, it's gonna be fun. And it's gonna be a good time to just bring back the old, the old, the old crew for uh, for another, for for another bout. It's been uh, it's been Last roughly well, almost two years. No, no, yeah. we've just been over a year, so a year and a couple months by the, the, mm -hmm. since um, the end of that campaign. So, although but now they've told us which we arc, took quite a big break. Yeah, now Not that you've told us which arc we're doing, I think that helps because I was still I still hadn't picked which of my two characters I was gonna play, but now I think I know which one. Okay. It makes, makes more sense narratively. Yeah, I think narratively, what I'll do is because Bran obviously uh, like lives in the Shadowfell, right, and tr and vibes with uh, the Raven Queen. We'll do we'll do the, we'll do a thing. I'll, I'll me and Ethan will just kind of talk about like how would he, you know, how would he contact the rest of the party and bring them back together and stuff. And that's probably how the the session's probably going to start where Bran has already reached out to you all and kind of gathered you all at the Guild Hall, and that's where you get the lowdown and you're going kind of thing. Probably that's probably how it's going to start. On the group WhatsApp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Nicole's changed number. Like, up <laughs> yeah, and Nicole uh, has a, a 2000s Nokia. I think also for the video. sake of everyone's, you know, everyone's characters, <laughs> we'll say that this takes place roughly a year after campaign one concluded. So the party's had a year to kind of, you know, do their own personal yeah, thing. What kind of grinding have we been doing to get to level 18 in a year? I don't know, man. So yeah, yeah running way, a fucking guild. That way you guys <laughs> can also kind of just like, yo, you know, oh, Gen has done this in the year that that's after they, you know, you, be, you, you beat Orcus and, and, and uh, oh, yeah, fucking Nikula's been really going ham on the guild leading and everyone kind of just... Yeah, well, I'm, at the end, when, when we concluded campaign one, we sort of set out the game plan for each of our characters then and there, right? Like yeah. what they're going on to do, so. Yeah, I believe Gen was like, you were going to go to the Feywild, right? To that yeah, college. he's going to found... Oh, no, he wanted to go to a college in the Feywild that I don't even remember the name of. Yeah, in the town, in, in the town where Naron's yeah, parents college uh, lived, right? And yeah. you were going to... Because they were doing a bunch of colleges there, but they didn't have a College of Glamour there, and that's why Gen was like, oh, that's what I'm going to do. I wanted do, to I bring think. it to the material yeah. plane, I think. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so just... wait, so actually, while we're on this then, can mm -hmm. I completely reclass Gen to be College of Glamour instead of College of Law? If you want to. Because I can't multi-class, but that would be really fucking cool. If you want to, yeah, I'll allow it. Sure, because Hell we'll say yeah, that dude. with with a year of like training and... and teaching other people the College of Glamour ways, so we can say that Gen... Well, he'll be in the Feywild, so who knows how long he was oh, actually true. there. Oh, true, yeah, fucking time is yeah. wonky there anyway, yeah, fuck it, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, you guys have two weeks to kind of, you know, level up your boys, think of if you want to respec him, uh, I'll allow it as well, if just for this one time, if you guys want to respec something, or, you know, if you're a multi-class and you want to just put some more levels in one class and take some levels away from the other, that's that's fine, that's fine by me. Uh, so yeah, have a think on that. Um, other than that, I don't have any announcements. So, anyone else want to take it away? Laura, I want to unofficially oh. announce my unofficial return to streaming Yo. because uh, Return of Monkey Island comes out Monday the nineteenth. So, like, there's no way I'm not gonna stream it. I'm I'm looking forward so, to that stream. I'm, I I, I'm, I really yeah. want to watch you play that. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> uh, th yeah, th th there's no way I'm not gonna stream it. I know, like, for a while I was like, yeah, I'll play through Monkey Island one and two in advance. I have no idea if that will happen. It might like next week, but They're not very long. Yeah, games, I'm gonna right? I'm gonna stream Return of Monkey Island on the nineteenth. Hell yeah, uh, Laura! I'm looking not at you because you always have announcements. Yeah, <laughs> usually, this was not so much an announcement, more of just a warning slash apology. My voice is still fucked from the weekend of weddings and bridal showers and shit. So, so I, guess, I, so. I I will sound well. <laughs> even Lots more so. I'm approaching. Woo! I'm approaching that point, so it might be. <laughs> Thank God I play a character that doesn't talk a lot, is all I'm saying for today. Actually, yeah, but... on, in, in that same vein, uh, I had the most debilitating migraine ever yesterday. That so sucks. No, day before yesterday. So, if that happens again, I'm just going to dip. Like, I, that's fine. There, there's no way. Yeah. That's I, fine. I just, yeah, just yeah. If, you, if you feel too shitty to play, then yeah, by all means. It's... <laughs> Funny you should say that, Bell, because when it was coming on, I was literally playing Baldur's Gate with Koiba, and I was like, yeah, man, my vision's fucked, but I'm gonna just play through it. And that was the biggest mistake of my entire life. That was <laughs> like, such I, a bad I, idea. He said that, I was like, what? are you sure, mate? And he was there like, yeah, it'll be fine. And then like, Cause, 10 minutes later, I was like, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, like, so, so the day before, I had one, but it was really mild, 
but like the aura is like really obvious so like i get like parts of my vision start getting like weird yeah. lights in them and shit and i like it happened the day before and it was like no big deal so i was like yeah fuck it man let's just keep playing like i was struggling to read subtitles <laughs> because it was so bad but i was like yeah i'll be fine it was no it was a huge mistake i that yeah fucking take care i was, yourself well, first, I was like this close yeah. to like i need to go to hospital like it was bad take care of yourself first homie do you need to yeah, wait yeah, yeah. it's all good uh wait bora oh. isn't friday uh, oh yes uh, yes called another day on yeah, uh, yeah, Friday is episode five of Call of the Nether Deep, Wait, and the past four really are on YouTube if you want to catch up. Our first episode is almost at two hundred views. That's already. nuts, actually. Pretty awesome. Oh yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fucking that campaign has been a lot of fun so far. The party is starting starting to really like role play with each other and all that stuff. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a fun thing to be a part of. So I do recommend you guys tune in uh, this Friday. Uh, we're doing another like late one, right? I believe. Or? Yeah, it's another two-hour shorter late yeah. night so one. For us but EU hopefully boys. the last one, uh, it'll be the last like shorter late night one for EU. Yeah, we have a full EU. one planned for. And we go back to Saturday. Well, we we thought we had one for the twenty-fourth, but then I think we realized there were actually conflicts there. But we're gonna. Yeah, we're we'll, gonna figure figure it out. It out. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but th th this Friday, uh, fucking like midnight or one a.m. EU time. But if you're on the NA side of things, you know what? what Six p.m. Seven p.m. E uh, Eastern. Right? Seven p.m. for Eastern. Yeah. yeah Six p.m. So. for Central. If you can't watch it live, there's always a YouTube. Don't worry. Um, yeah. With that, unless there's any more announcements, we'll uh, get into the recap. Last session, you started off with your ship surrounded by sirens, and, and you had to fight those off. They were, they were to snatch one of the crewmates, but through some clever thinking and use of spells, Jax managed to save that crewmate, yoinked him out of the ocean, put him on the on the deck of the ship. And I, I don't remember who, but one of you guys fucking made sure to heal him so that he uh, was outside of uh, any uh, mortal danger. Um, and after defeating the sirens, you guys set off further towards your destination uh, on your... Uh, la, 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 la second day of travel out of the five you would need to get to where you want to be um towards the evening a storm struck and hit the ship and uh, you guys were required to do a bunch of um a bunch of things to make sure that the ship wouldn't sink the ship would stay on course uh, make sure that everything was tied down nobody fucking got killed one crewmate sadly got hit overboard um but you know it is what it is. That's uh, that's a risk that you uh, that, you know you're willing to take when you uh, go on adventures on pirate ships, I suppose. And then um, you guys went to bed, had a long rest, and then the next day, halfway through the day, Davian spotted on the horizon a ship adrift, not sailing any colors, with sails looking tattered and torn, hull made from white wood, and the details like the railings and the and the wheel were a deep crimson color. Uh, when getting closer. You guys notice that there is a name on the side of the ship that says the White Phantom. And when we start off, uh, I want to give the people, the pirates of the crew, so that would be Kai and Jax, a chance to see oh, yeah. if they maybe recognize the ship. So would you two please roll a history check for me? 30, 20. Okay. Uh, 24. Alrighty. Uh, I'm just going to not have everyone deafen i'm just gonna read it out and then you guys be like oh cast exposition whatever uh because it's a, it's, a, it's a lot it's a lot um okay. you know that the white phantom is a ship that sunk many decades ago a pirate ship ran by a human crew under the lead of captain hayden the crew however uh was afflicted with a curse because hayden uh fell in love with the very person you're about to rob Umberly. Uh, Umberly toyed with Captain Hayden, made him do all sorts of awful deeds, and when she was done with him, tossed him to the side, cursed to sail the seas forever. You also know that when you're sailing the seas, there's a, there's a bit of pirate um, superstition. That there's three bad omens that that really sh that 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 signify a a doomed. Uh, a doomed course or a doomed trip 
uh, there's a bit of a, 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 a written passage passed down among pirates. Um, when you see these three signs at sea, the end has come for the crew and for thee. The first sign is a ghastly ship, white and crimson in color. If you see okay. this, you better run to your mother. The second sign, if you survive the first, is what many seafarers consider the worst. A large warship rises from the deep. It lies in wait for the crew to be asleep. Cannon fire and flames will follow, and finally, your ship it will swallow. If you manage to survive, there is a third. This one nothing but a tiny little bird. In size it will grow, expanding its grip until it's big enough to carry your entire ship. Um, you also know that this is, say you survive all three, or this is where it gets scary because there's no written or any told stories about where you get taken if the bird manages to snatch your ship. There's also no written stories nor stories told about people that survived all three omens. So you don't know what comes next. But you do know that spotting the white phantom is the first of the three. I mean, someone lived long enough to tell all three signs, so... Or it's all a lie. <laughs> that, um, would be, that would be the real five-head move. It's just all made up. <laughs> I, I, I'll i tell the, all of the party all that. Uh, but it's just mostly cockamamie shit. I don't believe it. Uh, Captain Vera will like kind of like sidle in uh, among you all and... Well... Superstition or not, ghost ship or not... Do you reckon... Could be some good loot on the ship, no? Tiny pit stop? Uh, potentially. If they are I truly like cursed to steal the seas forever, surely they've accumulated great wealth over those years? Or it's all been stolen, but mm. it doesn't hurt. Well, I'll leave it up to you. Do you guys want to just keep going, or have a look? My... I, I will sign to Kess. I vote, have a look. Given if I put much weight in superstitions, I'd be a lot more miserable than I already am, so fuck that. Fair enough. Dagon says she would like to go and have a look. I would like to keep going. Well, that's just a reversal of things right there. I mean, I like a good I... ghost story as much as the other, but I mean... I'd like to I, have a look. I don't know. I don't... I... After I'm Kess says that, I'll um, I'll sign to her again. I mean, I'm not saying I have this burning need to go look. Just if it was pick or choose, I have no issues. Double in, doubled in. I don't think we'll find. I think we won't find much, will we? It's a. I'm really curious, and I hate how curious I am because that screams some fucked, bad, cursed, evil. No. I hate it, you know, the part of me that is, in any sort of way, a holy man, is saying that I should probably do something about the undead, if that is a thing that is on there. However, it seems a little bit above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, do I hear three in three, then? I mean, I'm saying no. I, I signed a cast that you can change my vote to not going, if you Fuck. want. You can tell them that. Seems like a non-vote. <laughs> I would, probably just, you don't I would know. probably just. I would probably just look at the yet? captain and see if she, <laughs> someone <laughs> could take over the wheel. Kai wants to go on the ship. Of course, of course. Well, how, how many things does this ship look from here? Um, the ship, like it looks, the hull itself looks pretty, pretty intact, pretty well kept. It is mainly the only real damage you can see is that the sails are completely in tatters. But other than that, like the hull, the railings, really the glass, wheel. Man. That looks. That all looks pretty. I'm mean, sure someone good. on the parachute has one if you want to. Take I mean, it. yeah, I'm sure. You I mean, I, I have a fly glass, but that's the point. That's true. We stole that like way long ago. We got that like. Dude, I have watch. cartographer's <laughs> tools, but I don't know if there would be like a yeah, spy glass. Yeah, I anymore. imagine if you're like making maps and shit, you you have a little thing that's like, you know, looking in a distance. It's, the distance, it's not right? spy glass. It's binoculars, like really fucking like actual ugly, binoculars, like, like watching fucking... binoculars, like. <laughs> not a I mean, mini ones. Has that's fancy as hell. Oh, yeah, opera glasses. Opera glasses. <laughs> opera glasses. Yeah. There you go. So, so can I fucking whip out my spyglass or 
I have binoculars or opera glasses or whatever and get a closer look, can I see any, any crew? Make a perception check. On this thing? Oh, I left I my phone. Normally, I like the distractions, <laughs> but maybe we should focus on our main. Don't thing. you love it? Well. Shit. <laughs> Just dropping. Oh, natural 20. Oh, natural shit. 20. Oh, okay. There we go. It was worth the wait. You look and you don't see any signs of crew. Uh, the ship, or the deck of the ship at least, completely abandoned. Uh, you also see signs of like cobwebs and dust indicating that there's not really been much activity on the deck of the ship recently. Or they just don't care to clean. <laughs> yeah, but even then, like like even this. then, you would see like footsteps in the dust and stuff. And this is like yeah, there's yeah, just like yeah, a yeah. coating of, of dust and cobwebs. Oh, yeah. Just because it would be, it's on the sea. Does it look corporeal? Like corporeal is the non-ghosty kind, right? That's just like yeah, yeah like physically. Solid. Uh, yeah, physical. yeah, it looks it looks yeah. solid. Yeah, like it looks like an actual ship. Do we look like we're gonna be intercepting on, it, or is it like I mean, in the distance? From here, from what I can tell, there's not even anyone on board, and if they are, they're all below deck, so I don't think there'd be any harm in just getting a little closer and maybe having a look, right? I mean, if it's supposed to be a ship at the dams, let's say, not a huge fan of sunlight, probably below decks, to get away from Well, that. then the advantage surely is well, in no, our favour. If they're well, looking until we, until we stand on the deck. Yes. Until we stand on the deck and they all climb out of the woodwork and... Yeah, well, they yes, climb out and the sun the fucks them up and... Yes. Falls so in our so this is me taking a limit. guess. This isn't me because I know what is on this ship, okay? That's well, there not... may also be nothing on the ship. <laughs> yeah, we may but there could be some something on the ship. Curse the moment Are there, like, the are there like holes on the side for cannons to stick out? Yeah, it does, the... have, uh, it does have... Uh, what are they called? Port sense... port port portholes? What are they called? Yeah. Could I sense chip? To fly down there and have a little look Absolutely. inside to see if there if there's stuff under there. Absolutely, yeah. Despite my confidence, I'm not sending Odo anywhere near that <laughs> ship on his own. <laughs> no, no, do you have this ability where you can like see what your familiar sees? Right, that's a thing. That it's familiar, so, uh, yeah. Like a, yeah, yeah. So the way this is now, you, you guys are heading into like a westbound direction, right. and um, the ship is kind of just chilling on your path. You don't have to really go out of your way. It's just kind of there. So if you get, yeah, when, once you get close enough, uh, if you want to send Chip to through one of yeah, those I would like ports, to, uh, can, yeah. I would like to send Chip in there just to have a little look, see if there's stuff going on. Okay. That's a little, a little bit more ominous. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the fact that it's just on our right. course, like it's just a ship. Just wait. It's just coincidence. Right. Um, mm, when you I'm send Chip, up, uh, Chip enter or like flies into one of the, uh, the holes in the side. Mm -hmm. As it'll look inside. Um, let's make a perception check for uh, for Chip, please. Hold up, let me let me get the thing up. Or I guess if you're going to use your ability to see through his eyes, I guess. Did that replace... wait. Are we getting wait? Are we getting 120 feet tall? It, 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 like near the ship? Hang on. <laughs> that seems yes. way too close for us to having a be having a look. <laughs> Hang about. And that's what we have to do if he's gonna have a look. What the f <laughs> oh, I just need, need to figure out if if I if what I use my that? perception or a perception of an owl or something. But like it's in our way anyways. So. I feel like we probably should have been not that close. Say... I'll be honest. Well, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, you get that close and nothing happens. That makes me even more uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, rather did, something did, happened. Wait. Did we long rest since right? the combat with the sirens? Yeah, we have. We have, yes. we have yes. After the storm, yeah, yeah, you guys yeah. long rested. This is the next day. Right. Yeah, uh, it is perception the first of Septimon. Plus three. That is. Oh, yeah. I can count. <laughs> can you? <laughs> One, 17, 12. I can count. Yeah. 17. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> if we can do it! Woo! 17, alright. Um, no, Chip has a look around, and you, uh, you know, your eyes go a little bit foggy as you use your abilities to see through Chip's eyes. And what you see down there is, um, it's dark, but the light shining through, uh, the, like, entrance to the, to the top deck, and also through the, uh, like, the cannon ports, or whatever the fuck they're called, uh, you see a lot of dust, a lot of cobwebs, a lot of crates sprung about, but also a pretty large chest. 
seemingly locked with like a padlock. That's a trap. <laughs> Let's run it, boys. Take it's a minute. It's I will. A the I will boat's tell a minute. Ship to come back. I will relay that information to the rest ship. of the party. Okay. It's like, I don't. Well, if there's an unguarded chest, we should go grab it. Then. Oh, oh, didn't no. see any people. Just a chest and some crates. A lot of dust. I'm, I'm sorry. With our history, well, your guys' history chest, if what I've heard recently is true about this dimension hopping chest, which you have not told me about. But I ever heard. One talked. This one didn't talk to his bird, so it's not the same. We don't know that. We don't know <laughs> that it won't talk to us. Okay. Wait, what what if, what? Okay. All right. So what if it starts if talking, go, we'll. Okay. Okay. What if I go? You I got can, trapped. I can, no, I you're, can not, go you're back. not going by yourself, Jack. I can come back. No, 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 no. If it's an important chest, then it's guarded whether we see it or not. If it's genuinely I feel like guarded, at this point, I can grab it and then chest. just come back no. to the ship immediately. Dex, how long have these stories of this boat been around? How long have the stories been around? Uh, well, the ship, the real, the real, if you, if you believe superstition, you know that this yeah. ship sank decades ago. Uh, maybe in the last how, 50 how many years. years Do you so? think we're the first pirate ship to maybe go towards it and look in there? Of course. I'm sure it's very hard to find. You're the right. kind of person to no. get well, in Jack's in defense, in Jack's defense, right, this is a route that nobody really takes, so... It, right, it, but we're still, not going, every... we're still not going to be the first person to investigate it, which means it's probably nothing in there left if there was something Oh, like, they're too stupid no, to get No, 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 no. There's, there's many seasoned seafarers on board this ship. I'm sure the stories of this phantom vessel aren't Specifically here, I'm sure. Like, where else has it been spotted? I mean, well, so if there's stories. Well, it's kind of hard to tell. Most sailors embellish, so. It, there's one it, thing I've learned really about superstition is that people really like to um, over-exaggerate. Well, yes, that's what I'm Very saying. Is so. is if you are one who, when they hear a pirate superstition, knows they're exaggerating, you're probably not the only pirate who has that thinking. Okay, so, probably, so worst case scenario, go. I go on board, I get attacked, I teleport back. This is getting really overcomplicated just, and out of hand. At the end of the day, are we, are we risking right our there. main trip if we fuck with this? And the answer, I think, is yes. Yes. Uh, well, we've already seen a sign that doesn't say anything about fucking with it to damage it more, so... No, but they have cannons. And we have cannons. Well, oh. it, it only takes one shot to delay us and fuck up our trip. It also only takes, you know, six seconds or so for me oh. to teleport there and then teleport back. But what if something goes wrong and we have to fuck around with that? Why risk it? I'm normally the one who's on board for this sort of shit, but I mean, you're one with this the is important. Uh, yeah. Brooks, what if we find some kind of legendary artifact? Fantastic. It's been news. lost to time. Well, if we see the ship on the way back, we can fuck with it then. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I've it never seen it before. Well, you live about six lifetimes, don't you? So Exactly, and it, I don't have any left. Fine. It'll be fine. Oh. I don't want to meddle in this domestic you're about to have, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> um, Jax, in order to teleport to and from, do you have to see where you're teleporting to? Yes. What if? Uh, Hear depends me out. on which one I use, I think. Hear me out. We have our cannoneers blow a hole in the side of the ship, so you have vision of the chest, and you just. Um, I don't think antagonizing good the to ship. Me. I, sorry, Captain. Sorry to, not to, interfere with what. <laughs> sorry, Captain. You are be a bitch, but, but surely no, antagonizing and firing the first shot without any warning is going to be one of the worst situations. Is being hostile. Surely shouldn't we well, there's, there's no crew. That we there's know of. That we right. know of. Fucking no more plans. Well, J or well, A. Okay. No, now, you're right, a fucking captain. captain. Make a decision. Are we going for it or not? Because I can't be fucked with this anymore. No. I think no. I need the decision here. Uh, captain, as your trusted navigator, I think the Shut best the option up. would be to secure the cargo. The trusted. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay, should okay. Quarter, should ask for quartermaster as well, really, technically. but. So we have... My navigator telling me, I, we have, my, 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 we have you, Elazarin, saying no, 
you know. So, He's also very inexperienced. Celesti. And Celesti moon comes, mommy. Comes around. <laughs> Did you say moon mommy? He listens along to this conversation. Star, star mommy. As my yeah. second, second in command. What do you think? And she is going to roll. Oh. At this point, I don't Mom. care what we do as long as we do something. Well, given that I, I understand the worries and I understand how everything is a bit scary and this this whole pirate superstition thing, but if, like you said, Captain, blow a hole in the side of the ship to reveal the treasure, Jack's going to be to and from within 10 to 12 seconds and we just dip, that's probably my preferred course of action. Well, I say what we... We do what Celeste says. I'm, I'm not biased. Just... And if he doesn't get back she on is the second ship, in command and knows his stuff. And if he doesn't get back on the ship, it's no great loss. <clears throat> right. That's true. Exactly. But all if right. he does get back on the ship, with the chest, made... and the chest turns out to be evil and swallows us all into a, some sort of strange limbo dimension where we all suffer for the rest of eternity. Um, Everybody, you owe me a drink. That... Man your stations. Fair enough. Man your stations. Dagon, guess. Load the cannons. <sighs> Jax, <laughs> you better be back on this ship within 12 seconds, or we're leaving uh, Yeah, you. get me within 90 feet, please. All right, Kai. You heard the man. If 12 that seconds to be back on the ship, in 12 seconds exactly, we continue. Jax? Sounds good. All right. Dagon and Kess, do you load the cannons? Okay. Um, yeah. Fuck, they're about to charge I, it. I, I kind of want to, as they're going down deck, because my station's technically below deck as well, mm -hmm. uh, kind of whisper into Kess's ear. I mean, you can always miss. <laughs> <laughs> and just continue on. <laughs> I mean, you can always fire again once he's in there. And carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, uh, no, uh, fucked up. I can tell you now, two types of people. Two types of people. Um, you could miss. There's three. There's also yeah. the one that goes on the ship. Kess and Daigon? Yeah. Uh, do you load the cannon? Um, yes. Okay. And I'm going to sign what Elazarin said to Daigon as, like, hidden as in a way when no one else can see it. Which is... So what, what, what exactly are you sending me again? Uh, it's basically Which just part of miss. Oh, so to del okay. I want to not, okay. I don't, not to like, I'm going to be devil's advocate here. Mm. Your ship is within 90 feet of the other ship. Mm. Your Optimus. cannons are literally like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like there's Absolutely. only so much wiggle room you have. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know how really practically, crazy. how, how easy it would be to miss. From yeah, I'm range. gonna you do it mean? anyway. You could miss okay. fire and Well, okay, I mean, I mean, I feel like the best way to do it would be... It's gonna be a low AC or whatever, like, however you roll to hit with the cannons, yeah. but just allow Belle to roll with disadvantage, and... Yeah, I guess. There's a good chance she'll still hit. There is a good chance I'll still hit. Yeah, I mean, Earth also doesn't understand how cannons work properly as well. So he just assumes you can aim them like just in the water or some shit. Yeah, like, never use the cannon. Earth does not have like a in-depth knowledge yeah. of like military. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll do that then. Artillery. If you choose to want to try and miss, I'll allow you to roll this advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would like either of you. Uh, which one of you is going to do the the actual firing of the cannon? Like, I'll do it. Okay. Well, Laura historically rolls what? No, we're not. We're not firing our own cannons. We're working on together. Like one of us is like loading. Oh, I mean, a you can all, you can each fire a cannon firing. if you want. Yeah, yeah. So I thought we were each on a cannon. Oh yeah, no, you can, yeah, fa yeah, sure. You can both roll okay. them. Yeah, yeah. And if you're gonna try and miss, then uh, yeah, roll with disadvantage. So is, is that now roll? cannon? Do we need so, to tell you ahead of time what we're doing? Uh yeah. Well, if you yes, because if you want to try and miss, you roll with disadvantage. If you don't want to try and miss, you just straight roll. Yeah, I'm going disadvantage. Okay. I'm I'm probably going. Sorry. I'm probably going straight roll. Okay. Because I don't think... D Daggett's not going to try really hard to miss, mm. but seeing that she maybe, like, 
might not try and be as sharpshooter, but not. I don't think enough would still have this advantage. But maybe it's like so she can at least maybe in her mind pretend she's kind of doing both and please everyone. Like I'm doing my job, but I'm also maybe kind mm -hmm. of listening to Kes. But I think okay. she's not gonna be that. Hard. She's trying to be a your mic is uh, yeah. cutting cutting off uh, an awful lot. Laura. That's hold on. Let me change it. Um, but yeah, in that case, just both of you roll a d20, Kes. With disadvantage, with and I'll add the bonus because the cannon has like its own like to hit bonus and whatever, so I'll just add it to it. Just give me the I dice rolled, roll. I rolled an 18 and a 4. Okay. Alright, I'm changing it to push to talk for now, because yeah, my mic just seems to be doing weird things right now. Mm. Um, What modifier do we add to the roll? I'll, uh, I'll just give me the straight roll. Well, like Ethan said, if you want someone to miss, ask Laura to roll. That's a 3. Okay. Four and a three, baby. Four and a three. Let me quickly have a look. Plus 27 to hit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Never misses. No. Uh, hull, hull. It has an AC of three. Like every... I hope so. <laughs> you fire your cannons. I feel like... And somehow, both cannons miss. To which... <clears throat> I'm just gonna see how Vera reacts to this because she's not gonna be happy either way. Because if you purposely miss, she's gonna be pissed. Him, if you me. miss on accident, she's pissed because like how the fuck do you miss? So she's gonna be pissed either way. <laughs> right there, in front the of you. Dice. Jump it's the dice's fault. It's not my fault. Vera's coming down the stairs with Vera, the whip and like, the paddle. Vera like comes down the stairs, looks at you both. It's right fucking there. <laughs> I've never used a cannon. I'm very confused. Full deception check. Is real bad. I rolled so good. Uh, that is a wait. Where are my skills? I have no skills. Uh, twenty-seven. Okay. Skill issue. Out of the way, and she'll begin to load the cannon again and takes aim. Let's go. How funny would it be if she now she rolled missed. like a natural one or something? <laughs> just oh, for the lulls. So. Rolled a natural and 16. So uh, rolled a natural God 16, so that, that does hit. She it's fires the cannon surprise. and it blasts into the hull and like it connects with something on the other side. It just creates this like big explosion and you guys on the top deck just see the entire like 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 a a very large chunk of the the starboard side no the port side uh hull just blasts out and you see the chest Jax. Mm -hmm. what do you do okay. so just as soon as he does that i'm going to uh pull out what seems to just be like a normal little dagger mm -hmm. and like cut in the air in front of me as i cast vortex warp and this little just like black hole like appears out of the air and i step through it go to the chest okay. grab it does anything happen uh, as you get on the ship, and you 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 see the chest, like I'm assuming you appear right in front of the chest, right? Yeah, yeah, like right in front of it. This like bone chilling cold just like travels down your spine, and I'll give you a chance to react. Like, but but you see yeah. twenty ghosts, all seemingly human, dressed as pirates, just like apparate just throughout the the hold. What do you do? Cool, 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 cool. Um, so would this be considered a turn that I lost my action because I just teleported on there? No, 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 because they appeared after oh. you. Okay, you know, so um, fine. I'm going to put one arm around the chest and uh, cut through the air again and cast Vortex Warp back to the ship. Okay, you appear back on the ship. The ghosts just stand, peer at you, the entire, like, ship, and look at you, and they don't do anything. But they start they start reciting that rhyme that you just told the rest of the party about the three signs. One, two, he's and, after and you. Vera just shouts at Kai, "All right, get us out of here!" I'm scared. Thing and I ring the bell in the crow's nest. Get us the fuck out of here! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just look at a Lazarin. So the, the and you leave the white phantom behind, <laughs> and the ship doesn't follow you. The ghosts, you kind of see them, like in, in the distance. You see them still like standing there, their mouths still moving. So you figure they're still reciting that that thing that that uh, 
that like rhyme, that superstition. But they don't seem to give chase. Oh, I, that, I hate that even more. Let's see, there was no problem. Mm. Very good, I and uh, I believe as our uh, contract states, any treasure you find along the way is yours to keep, so enjoy that. It's I'm going to take that below decks and start cracking it open. Hey, you, wanna... I... you, okay. you know his cuss is fucking very being... just like, okay, I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, be... Yeah, Cass is, is oh, far away from it. Okay. <laughs> I'm quite opposite. I'm right next to Jax for this. Okay. I will um, also go get far I... away from it and go hang out with Cass. Well, I will if go... There... I'm excited right now. If there is a check to open it, I will guide him. Yeah, uh, do you, uh, Jax has Thieves tools, right? So if he I wants do, to, and I'm uh, proficient in them. I will yeah. guide Jax for that Thieves tool test check. I'm like, you got this, Jax. Uh, Gens is D4? Plus D4. Ooh, that's nice. It's a plus three. Nice. 15, plus my bonus of... One. So... <laughs> is that 15 total? But you rolled what? Yeah. Yeah, 11 plus three plus one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So 15 total? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was that element. was the DC. Oh. So you You're welcome. Put your <laughs> thieves tools in there, start you, you, you start wiggling them and just padlock opens up and you open up the chest. And inside it you see the following. Didn't die, boys. Yeah. Uh you take your time a to kind of go off. through it. You find a total of two hundred and fifty gold pieces. Hog. Four gold that. chalices, worth 50 gold each. Five rubies, worth 75 gold each. Three diamonds, worth 300 gold each. And five silver jugs, worth 20 gold each. And a journal, with a name on the cover. Captain James Hayden. I will kind of look at uh, I will look Jax. Um, I should probably... Do you mind if I look at the gems just to evaluate their costs? I'll get out like my, like, jeweler sort of, like, eyepiece to... Uh, sure, just give me one second. And I want to cast with my little rod, uh, Detect Magic. None of it is magical. Not the chest, Monday's... not anything inside it, not the lock, nothing. It's good and Muggle bad. booty. Uh, I will, after that, I'll hand the gems over. And I will evaluate them to... Yeah. And I'll tell him the gems. Well, I mean, those... You guys can have... I mean, you could have the rubies, but those diamonds would be really good for spell casting for me. Um, if you don't mind. Or you guys can have them yourselves, but... Uh, I mean, if you can use the diamonds, I have no problem with you having them. And I will get... Okay. Revivify diamonds, Pog. <laughs> One, two, three more revivify diamonds. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, you find that, you find the journal, but uh, yeah. So far, so good. Nothing seems magical. Hey, so didn't uh, die. Free Smile. money, I guess. <clears throat> That's it. Captain Vera comes down and kind of looks, looks over her shoulder. It's not a bad hole, is it? Uh, no, uh, honestly, surprised there was this much. Well, maybe it's like you all sent. Uh, who knows how many ships have come across this uh, ship and... Well, unless every time the ship appears somewhere, it is completely fixed up again. Maybe we were the first to, instead of going in the normal way, blow a hole in the side and... Let's just say that I don't know many pirates with the ability to teleport, you know? Uh, that's a fair. Uh, uh, yes, maybe other people got stuck in those ghost pirates. Perhaps. Well, enjoy that. Did you pick up, I... did Jax pick up the journal, or...? Yes, I took the rest of the goods. So you took the gold and the rubies, and the chalices. You took it, yeah, cool. I just took the and the silver and... jugs. Oh, the silver jugs, yes. So I didn't run the down, I got too excited by three 300 gold diamonds. <laughs> You're welcome. Ah. That shit pops. <laughs> when you a magic boy, 
And he'll be the first to die, so we can't do it anyways. I know, matter. I will. I'll do the first to die. do with the diamonds he never showed us. I'll, I'll learn. Give me four oh, levels. just there, smashing it into his chest. <laughs> the face, because you ever done stand like, Put it in his mouth. Oh. Just stabbing yourself over and over again. Um, yeah. So, unless there's anything else you want to do down there, you know, you guys continue course. Can I check if there's any hidden things in that chest? Sure. Hidden compartments. Make an investigation check. Yeah. chest. Mm -hmm. No is the answer. Um, ten. Ten? Okay. Not as far as you can tell. Can we, can we get the, can we throw the chest now? If oh, that's a point. Shit out of you. True. Because. I said that's a good point. Fuck yeah. the chest. I will. I will help Brooks, but help in that way you know where you're pretending you're lifting to like lift something up and you're just, if anything, making it heavier. <laughs> is yes. it really obvious to me that Lazarin isn't trying? I'm trying, but my strength is eight. So I mean like <laughs> <laughs> So he, he's I'm taking the weight. He's he's just there to stop it from being a one handed carry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> making it look like it's more impressive than Stop it, it from dragging along the floor pretty much. Yeah. Well. yeah, he's there he's yeah. holding at the bottom end and it's scraping his fucking Rich, you are doing all the load head. bearing, I'm just there like holding it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh wait, but uh did the lesson give me the rubies back after I gave you the room? I did give you the rubies back, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to check on that. Mainly because I, uh... Terrible idea. Stop giving him stuff. <laughs> what? I mean, what? I could look at him, too. I just felt I'd let him do it. I could feel better. Yeah. I mean, you know. So you, you chuck the chest overboard. Um... Celeste kind of walks up to you as a group and is like... That went well, right? Nobody died? Yes, yeah, but, but Jack's probably now haunted. I will be fine. You kind of people would go after honey and a mushroom ring. Jesus Christ. Is that a saying? What does that mean? <laughs> what? Why do we need honey? Come it's... on, no, even I got this one. Come on. <laughs> really? That's... Anyway, um... No, 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 no. Um, no, hold on. What? Um... Uh, What's wrong with honey in a mushroom ring? Okay. It's a fucking mushroom ring. Yeah. Hey. And it's honey. What does that matter? What have, what, a, what do the two have to do a with each other? A fairy ring, a fairy ring. Huh? But, ring of mushrooms. But what does the honey the have to do with anything? Yeah, but, but why the honey? That's the part. That's... Why would honey be in the middle of the mushroom? Right. To bait you into the fucking trap. To bait trap. you into the mushroom ring. I but like, no one's going to go. Is it like in a jar? Honey. Like, is it a, a little jar of honey, or is it just like smeared on the grass? Because then, oh, why would they put like a silver ring with like a ruby inside it? I feel like there's way easier ways of saying that you were walking into a trap than honey in a mushroom ring. Sorry, this is the first time you've talked to Kess, isn't it? Um, <laughs> pretty much. That's that's welcome. Just, that's just what you say. Is it? Is it? Yeah. yeah it, it's just it? a thing. No, no, no. It's using honey to bait, bait people into a fly trap. What? Mm, but like people can get caught a in a fly trap. trap. But... Isn't that the saying? Regardless. Um, oh. Sorry if my decision rubbed some of you the wrong way. It's just, you know, it's... It went with my gut. Uh, nobody died, so that's not on me. If Jax happens to die a mysterious death about a week from now, or, or within a week... It was probably old age. Don't... Yes. Probably old age. Nothing to do with He's this. He's not that old. I will not have Jax's blood on my hands. Excuse you, I'm 307 years old. That's old. That's it. He, he thinks he's that age. He's probably lost count. Do you know how old you can get, Jax? 307. No, what's the, what's the average, more you know? If he keeps making stupid decisions. Uh, uh, most live anywhere from 250 to 300. <laughs> I've beaten the average. <laughs> so you're old is what you're saying. Oh. No, 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 no. Because, like, you know, child mortality always brings the average down. So mm. yeah, it's probably, like, way higher. Than... Right. You know, I don't think I've ever seen a Vidalcan child. Can you imagine a Vidalcan child? Can you imagine pushing baby jacks out? That would be fucking <laughs> brutal. He was born at eight foot. He's actually shrunk because he was born at 300. Oh, okay. I'm actually, I'm blowing a watermelon for, for a hose pipe. That's what I mean. You As you've got older, you've shrunk. Did you say for Dalkin? 
yes. Huh. It's not many of you. Usually just cop say big blue bars. Here, are they? Yeah. Well, be I've never met place. another one besides my parents. So were you were you born on this plane or did you, you know, move in? As land? far as I know. Curious. Interesting. My parents never paid much attention to me. They were always tinkering. That shows. So if Jack <laughs> goes missing, Celeste is probably studying him in, in the bottom of the ship. Well, I'm just... It's, it's interesting, no? It's a uh, species from a different, you know, realm? Uh, you know, this is your, this is your vibe, isn't it, so? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know... <laughs> oh, where... I wonder if we could use the spaceship that I create to travel through the astral plane to get there. Do you know... Do you know who's really interested and knows a lot about, like, other, other realms and stuff? Well, do you know... Um, where, where, you know, what, what realm, what plane is, you know, your home? Begins to Google. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the plane of Alara. Alara. Where's that? Wait, that might be the Magic the Gathering one. Fuck. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it all kind of from... <laughs> They might be from the same, honestly. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because that's um, what Vidokana. Dude, I've I've just never. Uh... Ooh, Looking, exposed. I can't find it. I genuinely have no idea. Exposed. Fake Vidalkin, dude. <laughs> they're from Ravnica, right? Even know you're they more. They yeah. they came out as part of the Ravnica book, but I don't think they're from Ravnica. Well, I'll find it. Anyways, keep going. Fascinating. We should have a talk about that sometime. When you that remember. Sounds uh, intellectually fun. Have I ever heard of that plane? No, nobody in this group has. Cool. Including me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Including Sogo. <laughs> um, but yeah, just wanted to make sure that we're all good. I know that some of you were a little against it, and I, I just, you know, I, steed. I'm a pirate. It's a person. I'm just looking things against the idea. Don't take it personally. Good. Right. Um. Or do. Lunch. 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 Drinks. Yeah. Lunch. Depends. Yeah, lunch sounds good. Cooking. What'd you say? Sorry. What's the cook cooking? Uh, I believe right now. Um. Richard, his name. What's he cooking? Apparently, uh, that's it smells Caladesh, like fish down the there. So hopefully, you guys like fish. Wouldn't have guessed. I mean, I'm sorry. That that was okay. That was a bit. That's even unnecessary. That was a bit. No, you're. I take that one back. Let's go get some lunch. She just kind of like giggles and. All right, let's go. I would say it's on me, but you know, nobody here pays, so. Not until about two hours after. Fair enough. If it's if it gets bad, just you know, hang whichever which 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 whichever end it comes out of over the side of the ship, and you'll be good. You know what? I'm sure Jack could invent something for that, <laughs> like a seat you strap onto the side, like a booster seat. Another Jack's. Now that I know Jack uses portals, what if what happens if you? Never mind. <laughs> Portal lose confirmed! What the fuck did I miss while I've been looking for this shit? <laughs> it's Kaladesh, Soko. <clears throat> Kaladesh, there you go. Yeah, Where I looked the fuck it did you there. find that? Uh, they, on Google. the Vidalcan, on the Vidalcan wiki, they have plane shift Kaladesh. Oh, there you go. So, I just was like, what's the Kaladesh plane? Then... There you go. Alrighty. So yeah, Celeste kind of just, uh, you know, hangs out with you guys for a bit, has some has some food and some drinks. Uh, is there anything you guys would like to do today before uh, we well, uh, with fast Celeste. forward to the evening? I would like to specifically, <laughs> a, but subtly... Make a charisma check, Davian. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to do my best to wingman Davian. I was there. Make a charisma check with advantage, impressed. Davian. Okay, hold on. I'm going to wingman Davian. I'm down for this. First roll is a 16. Okay. Yeah, okay, we'll go with 16. Just straight charisma? Straight charisma. 
So that's an 18 for me to woo Celestial Mummy. <laughs> um... Make an I'm inside check. To hit you, hit inside? You yeah. Into girls. Before I find out she's gay? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I really... This will be so funny. It's Seven bad. Is one true love. Bad? Six. Um... It's really... Yeah. Into My passive insight is 13, if that helps anything, but... Sure. I'm not confident. You kind of, you know, you, you, you put your best efforts into, you know, trying to uh, woo her a little bit. And she seems, she's very playful about it, but she seems game. She's, you know, she's, she's receptive. She's receptive. Yeah. Okay. She's coy, oh, but she's, she's, she's coy, but she's not against She seems it. game. 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 That's a tabelle. It's a tabelle. You just went, she seems, and I whispered, gay. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. It's, hey, magic exists, it's 2022. True. Yeah, so she's receptive. All right, noted. <laughs> Is there anything uh, you want to do? Because right now, today, a bit of a, a quiet day. Uh, Kai, you know, you're, you're you're making sure the ship maneuvers in the right direction. Jax comes up every once in a while to make sure that you're still on the right course. As you're kind yep. of, you know, collaboratively doing while that. I'm not navigating. And uh, is there anything you guys wish to do or discuss or... I want to corner wait. Brooks when he's oh. alone. Oh. Fuck's sake. All right. Want everyone to deafen for this or...? Nah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Just... Can I deafen for this? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As as I'm sure uh, <laughs> Brooks does every time. Uh, Cast Sarge, any one of us. Cast oh, starts shit. talking. He's yeah. got his fucking like, beats. His eyes glaze on. over. He just no, stares no, he he's straight. He's got his AirPods in. <laughs> stares straight and just starts nodding. Just. He's just, just playing talking golf while in Brooks is there hammering away with his AirPods in. <laughs> is he doing anything or is he just vibing? Is there any fucking woodworky dumb shit I need to do? No then... damage equals nothing for you to do right now. Then yeah, I'm just fucking hanging out and playing cards with other people, I guess, and wandering around the ship. When you are wandering down alone. Oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna get stabbed again. Oh, that sounds so ominous. Just up here. <laughs> it's like that scene at the office where Dwight turns around and Andrew is like right behind him. He's like, ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, why? I'm well, grand. Mm, that seems like a lie. You were not okay yesterday. Yeah, eh, it's fine. I'm sorry I put you in the position where you had to share that with the others. I mean, I'm not sorry that I learned it, but just that that was the way I learned it. I feel like you're digging yourself a deeper hole without meaning to. Isn't that how, how you, like, you apologize for the thing you did? Am I not supposed you're, to be honest? Am I supposed to lie? Of you. This is a learning experience. I... I mean... There's a basic mm -hmm. amount you should probably know anyway, it's just... It's an uncomfortable conversation. And going into the specifics of it is not fun. So in an effort to not completely destroy the mood and relationships I have with anyone within this group, I am avoiding that topic of conversation. Valid. It, it wasn't because you don't know your strength, though. You're well aware of your strength. It was complicated, and let's just leave it at that. Do you want to know my theory? Am I going to have a choice in the matter, or are you just going to tell me? No, you have a choice. The choice to be a willing or unwilling participant <sighs> to your monologue. No! Fine, go on, whatever. Because I can tell that you're really fucking excited to to school I think, off theories. I think it was because you were angry and just blinded by your own fury. 
I was expecting a bit more like tinfoil hat, like no, you know, like the aliens made you do it sort of thing. But nah, what's tinfoil? <laughs> We're in a magic <laughs> world. Tinfoil exists. It's who nope. again? I demand there is a magic item called a tinfoil hat. Sorry, your DM is busy right now. <laughs> Please try again later. Let me get to the phone. <laughs> this is a collect call from your D and D campaign. <laughs> See the pub on my phone? Ignore. <laughs> I. It took a while for me to be able to be angry in a fight and then not be angry. I understand that. It wasn't entirely undeserved, but... But I expected as much. It's... When we had a bar fight, uh, the, it was the, the Muddy Bowl, I think we had a bar fight at. Yeah. Like, that's a bar fight, and, you know, everyone's there, everyone has a punch-up, you people end up with injuries. But everyone, like... If someone wanted to leave that, they could. Nobody's... Like... <sighs> you don't intend to do someone harm like that. Not not meaningful harm. Hmm. It's just... Roughhousing. Whereas... That was... Different. And... It wasn't in a... Oh shit my life depends on this or it wasn't in a these are bad people it was just a fight that was and and it was not something I look back fondly on you know in the in the Feywild you tend to feel the extremes of something I nearly killed a kid once. Now, is this one of those Kesserisms that's like, oh, I, I set Minan's teapot on fire? No, I... Or is this... I... I used to enjoy climbing up onto the top of the cliff. And... It, no one ever really went up there because it was a... It was, it was a bit of a climb, but I was followed by the rest of the kids in the village and they never really talked to me. I was kind of left alone with the priestesses or whatever. And um, they followed me up and were making jokes about um, the, the dad they thought I had and that he was a coward and hadn't deserved to die in combat as he did and that my mother probably just been drunk or something and I got to the extreme of anger and one moment I was stood in front of them and the next moment I was at the edge of the cliff and they were falling. Fortunately, there were high priestesses at the bottom, so no one was hurt, but got close. I mean... I get it. <laughs> we're... a unique pair. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck do I say to that? Great, we have <laughs> we have a mutual experience of regretting violence that we can bond over. Well, I'm not even sure if it was violence. I don't even know what really happened. It could have been like a, a smaller version of the that blast of force that I use now. It could have been that I pushed. I don't remember. It was just 
one moment I was a couple of feet away, and then the next, they were halfway down a cliff. I did get a, a large amount of trouble, but <clears throat> that was kind of usual for me. They stayed away from me after that, though, so I never had an issue after that. See, I, don't get me wrong, like, you know, things weren't always fucking cushy noble palaces and, and merchant's guilds and shit when I was a kid, but they were steady. I never... Maybe when I was older, but, like, as a kid, like, I never really had to fight like that. Mm -hmm. Every time we talk about your childhood, it's continually <laughs> worse. Your your mom's not great, your, your dad came back and he's dying, but he ignored you for many years because he just assumed because it was easier for him to assume that you were fine rather than check the people mm. around you weren't great well my I guess she would be like a nanny she was one of the priestesses but she was pretty old and blind, which is why she was my nanny. She could be around when I wasn't disguised and the secret was still kept. She was she was really nice to me when I was younger and I, I didn't have any kind of shortage of anything I needed. I had plenty of clothes and toys and books, whatever I wanted, but just alone. Yeah, your childhood was fucked. Like, like I'm putting it out there. Your childhood was fucked. <laughs> I'm starting to realize that. Anyway. Entirely <laughs> unrelated, because I feel like this conversation just descends into us having a cry and, and a drink. I haven't cried. You did the cry magic thing. That was weird. Uh... Uh, that was magic. That's different. Who are we pranking next? <laughs> because I feel like it, so far it's been just a Lazarin. And he, as much as that's funny to continue... It's pretty funny. He might have a bit of a moment if we just prank a Lazarin. <laughs> I know what bugs and Lazarin. <laughs> I mean, okay, no, hear me out. So, part of me really wants to see <laughs> Davian make his moves. But, mm. we could embarrass him a little with that. This man literally said he was going to wingman me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think he was setting you up? That sounds like you have an idea. I don't have an idea. I have, like, a very, like small core thought that may grow into an idea with time and planning. Okay. I'm on board. We both disguise ourselves. Mm-hmm. Who does a better Davian impression? I mean... Maybe you? Hey, unless Kess has any other dumb questions, uh, I guess we spend the next, like, hour planning out how we're going to embarrass Davian. Yeah. Scheming. Yeah. Scheming. Okay. Um, <clears throat> at some point, Celeste will, will fuck off and do her, uh, her duties. Um, towards the evening, unless there's anything else anyone wants to do. 
uh, Captain Vera will come below deck and uh, hope you had a nice relaxed afternoon. But tonight you lots are on the night shift, so get to the top deck, keep an eye on things. The nights are, tend to be a lot quieter than the days, and according to Kai, uh, shouldn't be anything on our way, so the ship can just keep going. So um, make sure you stay awake. Don't fall asleep if only the alchemy on the job. jug could do coffee, that'd be amazing. <laughs> hmm? Only the alchemy jug could do coffee. Yeah. I mean, we still have the means to make we've some. We've still got coffee, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think I gave. Liqueur. Did I give it all to you? No, no, no. You only gave me some. I still got some coffee liqueur though, and Davian would know that. I see. I, I have six cups worth of coffee and the coffee brown kit. Yes. So. If you need me, I'll be in my quarters uh, discussing something with Celesti, but, um, you know, don't bother me unless it's important. Um, at some point throughout the night, I uh, just want to have a little chat with each one of you individually, uh, you know, in turns, so I'll send Celesti out to collect whoever I decide to talk to first, like and uh, we'll, ro we'll rotate from then on out. Parents, you should come, please. I don't like it. Make it go. Mr. DM. Hello. Performance review. We have individual qu mm. uh, quarters on the ship. No, you all sleep in, like, the, the crew. Communal hammocks. Yeah, communal hammocks. Just whichever one. Other, than the, other than the captain, does anyone have quarters? Uh, like, do Celeste all of does. the officers? Celeste does. Um... Yeah, no, just Celeste. Okay, good to know. <laughs> Being the the second in command and all, yeah. She she has her own private quarters. The rest of them all sleep in like the communal areas. Dangerous information. Oh man. Yes, I delivered. <laughs> um alright, so you guys are hanging out, top deck, you know, a Davian probably in the crow's nest if I if I were to assume correctly. I have Yeah, I, he's kind of relishing the solitude of the crow's nest a little bit. Mm hmm It's nice. Reminds him of... He doesn't have to put up with our shit. Yeah, it doesn't have to put up with anyone's <laughs> shit. And given how much time he spent in the wilds, like, especially on his own, just to take it in the, the night sky at sea and all of that stuff. I think since we're on the night shift as well, mm -hmm. I want to try and, like, keep an eye out for this teleporting constellation that we talked about in the first first day we were here. Okay. Uh, just kind of... Take a perception check. See what it's up to. Uh, 21. 21. You look around and it takes you a few minutes to really like spot it, but you do see it in a very different location than it was a few days ago. And it seems to just kind of be traveling clockwise around the like edge or like the border of the, the continent. In... Like in that blinking fashion or is it moving as I watch it? It's just, it's still right now, but it's moved since right. you last, like, looked at it, yeah. If I, if I take a closer look with, uh, the spyglass, mm -hmm. is there anything of note? Does it look... Does it look closer than the other stars? Does that make sense? Does it look like something you, in you. the sky and not just stars? No, is it high enough magnification to be a telescope? <laughs> uh, make a perception check. It, I don't really know how to explain what I mean, but... Oh, hell well, yeah, if, it, if it was closer in the sky, it would just mean the stars would look like brighter and larger, in theory, yeah. if they're well, closer to us, right? It, imagine, okay. I guess what I'm implying is, is there some sort of trick of, like, depth where it's not necessarily stars, it is, like, camouflaged or, like, so if you look closer, like an angle, you're like, oh, wait, that's not actually stars. That's something in the air that just looks like, like in stars. Mo in modern sci-fi, I'd be like using, you know, mirroring like a cloaking device. Yeah, right, right, right. The night I, I only got an 11. The D&D version of that. You got an 11? Yeah. As you kind of like, you use your, your um, spyglass yeah. to look into the sky and everything appears to be normal. But as soon as you aim it towards that constellation, it's just a bright flash and you just don't see anything. It's just... It's like blinding you. Oh. It won't let you, you look, look at, at it. it. It will not be perceived. Almost as if it does not allow you to look at it like that. Okay. It's just having um, a bad, you know, mental health day. It doesn't want to be perceived today. That's all. Try again. Feel that? I've never related to it. Unless you have a telescope in her. 
Celestia has a telescope, right? Uh, I'd imagine so. Like She's a, a star lady. A small, or something close like a, to Like a small yeah. portable one, yeah. Or like a yeah. sextant. Okay. I was, saying, I was just trying to remember that from last time if she actually had one or not. Yeah. Um, I do want to keep an eye out for the sky on fire from this ship that's going to attack us. Didn't say anything about a sky on fire, but... <laughs> Did say something like that? Well, it's like a boat built on fucking fire. I'll recite this oh, okay. one more time. Second sign, if you survive the first, is what many seafarers consider the worst. A large warship rises from the deep. It lies in wait for the crew to be asleep. Cannon fire and flames will follow, and finally your ship it will swallow. Gotcha. So it just I comes have... up out of the water Keep and lights you up. a large warship, then. I have a question, Dutch. I'll probably have that sounds like... Station is below deck. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So when he's told, man, your station, he just fucking goes back to his, he just goes downstairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the thing, the thing about the station is like, if people need treatment, they'll come find you as long as they know that you're in a certain area, right? You know, that they know where to look. I will literally, I was told to stay up. Fuck that. Captain's in their corners. I'm in my hammock. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. Piece of shit. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm like, I need to be up. No one's injured. Don't wake me. Fair enough. I'm, 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 cozy, I'm cozy up in the crow's nest, bro. I don't know how big the crow's nest is, but if it's small, I guess I've got my back against the mass of my backpack and stuff set up, so I'm comfy. Yeah, and your legs like kind of just like dangle like out of the like between the yeah through the, the yeah through like yeah, the railing, through the railing. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Celesti emerges from the captain's quarters and uh, walks up to Kess. Captain, like a word. You're muted, Bell. Yeah, you're muted. She, okay. She's in yeah. trouble. Oh, she's going. She's going. Okay. Gonna hear all about how she couldn't hit so a fucking see, kinda ship like, ninety feet away. This oh, is your yeah. one week performance review. <laughs> Been on the ship for three days. Exactly. That's what's so fucked about it. Give me a second. Give me a second. second. He's deciding your punishment. Seen the captain's daughter, probably. Probably. <laughs> Celeste is going to uh, go all the way to the, the, the front, front, front of the ship, and she just kind of like sits down on the bowsprits and just kind of chills. All right. Uh, for the sake of this, I would like everyone to, besides Bell to deafen. Uh, no. Keep an eye on it though, because it's not going to be super super long. So I don't want to have to fucking wait half an hour. <clears throat> Uh, right, guess have a seat. Yeah. You good? You enjoying what we're doing here? Yeah, it's been really interesting so far. All right. Um, sent word to our mutual friend about uh, what her fate befell the Weaver, and uh, mm. he uh, expresses his gratitude for figuring that out for him. He's also upset about the whole uh, nightweb situation. Yeah. But uh, he's, he's working on a plan to, to, you know. For now, he told me to tell you and Daigon that uh, we're going to be a little more careful than we already were. So keep that in mind whenever you're on an next assignment for them. Or whenever you search out uh, hideouts and warehouses that belong to the Crimson Lotus, be a little, be even more careful than you would normally be. Understood. Right. Um, I have a question for you. Mm. I have to ask. Mm-hmm. Miss on purpose? A little. Why? You know I come from the Feywild? Yes. Anything like that it's an automatic death sentence. You do understand that uh, with that contract that your friend so carefully crafted, you went against a direct order and technically broke the agreement you signed your name under, right? Written words have no real importance. If that happens again, no matter the consequences that might befall me 
Crimson Lotus, you're still on my ship. This is my jurisdiction. Disobey direct orders again, and I'll keelhaul you. In front of everybody. Cool. Yes? Yep. Very good. Now, that I don't have to, you know, we've had the strict I'm your boss talk out of the way. Couple days, we're gonna arrive at our destination. Mm-hmm. I expect a lot of trouble when we uh, find exactly where we're going. And I'm just trying to, I'm putting together you know, somewhat of a plan, I suppose. Um, you lot, you and your friends, a uh, lot more experienced on that side of things than, than, than me and my crew, so... What I'm going to be doing is, obviously Kai is going to be coming with you, I'm sending Celeste with you as well, being my second mm -hmm. in command, and she's a little more experienced than you all. You know, exploring, with her obsession about the stars or whatever, she's she's done a lot of, you know, exploring temples and abandoned religious sites and whatnot. I feel like she might be useful uh, for you guys. Um, only thing I ask is, do you have the ability to magically communicate with people on a further distance? Um... Like, would you be able to communicate with me when you're down there doing whatever it is you need to be doing? I don't think so. Anyone I in your group have that ability? I think Lazarin would be able to. Very good, very good. Okay. That's good. Um... All right. One more thing. Hmm? When we have this trident, hmm. I mentioned it before. Uh, before it got revealed that I'm a part of, you know, the Crimson Lotus. This druidic group that caused the storm that shipwrecked me and Jax. Um. I want to build a case, I suppose. To try and convince Elsinil and His Excellence to allow me to to use the trident to stop those druids from doing what they're doing mm. and get, you know, I wouldn't I would be lying if I said it wasn't entirely a little bit of payback, what they did to me and Jax This is us I'm just thinking, well, seeing as you proved yourselves pretty useful on the ship, when you're obeying orders, that is, she just kind of like slyly winks at you, would this be something uh, that down the line you would be willing to assist me with? Yeah. Like building the case, and, you know, convincing them, but also the actual doing, you know, f bringing the trident to... <laughs> Those druids and getting rid of them. Yes, sounds fun. All right, I'm gonna raise this question with everyone in the group. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gathering opinions. Um, good to know. Uh, unless there's anything you have to say to me, then uh, could you please fetch, uh, fetch Dagon for me? Yeah, of course. Appreciate it. He kisses his body over overboard. <laughs> Clear a splash. There, uh, looking at the wall, you just see the body go past. <laughs> <laughs> just... Yeah. Uh, I'll go find Diagon. Uh, different band. <laughs> hmm. uh, she wants to talk to you now. Are we in trouble? Okay. That looks like the find... most shady nah I've ever seen. We're in trouble. <laughs> well, we're not not in trouble. <laughs> Fuck. In trouble. We're not in any more trouble than normal. True. Um, this is the last one where everybody's gonna have to deafen, and then everyone can just like, keep listening. So. Oh, okay. Actually, they no. get the secrets after they Brooks. Secrets. Brooks 
after Brooks. Oh, Brooks. oh, I, wa I oh, wonder. I wonder what those days. I wonder what, those days. I wonder what they're doing with those so three. Fuck. Yeah. Hmm. What this might be about. Shut up. All right, so Dagon, you go report to. I, I guess Bell can remain undeafened because she's already heard the spiel, right? Oh, whatever. She just deafened now. Yeah, so whatever. Who cares? <laughs> you uh, you mosey into the captain's quarters, and uh, Captain Vera sits there behind her desk and says, "Have a seat, Dagon." Um, I will do as instructed. I'm gonna start off with uh, the same question I asked Kess. Miss on purpose? I honestly wish I had, because I feel like that'd be less embarrassing. I believe you. Cass admitted to missing uh, missing on purpose, and I told her if it happens again, she disobeys the director again, I'll kill haul her. I have to save you that spiel, because I believe you. Very good. Um, I sent word to our mutual friend about the fate that befell the Weaver, and he, uh... Is upset, distraught about it, but thanks you for figuring it out for him. Uh, he comes with some instructions. Um, he's very upset about the fact that the Nightwebs are, as he said, it's on our ass, and wants us all to be a little more careful. You know, when visiting safe houses, when 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 talking to fellow members, just pay extra attention. You're not being followed. Pay extra attention. You're in a safe place to discuss the things you want to discuss. All of that, just be a little more careful than you normally would be. Uh, then I have another question. I know I mentioned this in the beginning, uh, I don't know, to uh, to some of your group, I don't know if I mentioned it to everyone, but... That group of druids that caused the storm that shipwrecked me and Jax all those years ago. Did I mention to you that I would like to use the trident to... Take them I out. I believe that was mentioned, yes. Alright, I'm trying to build a bit of a case to try and convince Elsinil and His Excellence to allow me to do that. Um, Surely they'd allow you to if the condition was you give it back after. Obviously, not obviously. That they don't want the items to ever be used. They just no. don't want them to be used And obviously these, the people, people. these people that are doing uh, the storm, you know, the druids, they are evil, they are shipwrecking people, killing people, and, uh, you know, they need to be stopped, right? So that's that's definitely part of my case, but say it comes to a whole, you know, I have to just, you know, talk to them. Would you be willing to back me up? In both the convincing part, but also in the executing of the plan part. All of you have proven pretty useful to have around on a ship, and a lot more powerful than the average pirate, whether it is through magical means of, or, or you know, experience in, in fighting and, and that sort of thing, or just ex experiences elsewhere, you know, smart, insightful. And that way, we'll also have, well, if all of you would come along, that's three members of the Crimson Lotus there with me, when I use the trident to kind of make sure that I hand it in after we're done. Um, obviously, there'll be a reward. Uh, I, I told Kess the same thing, that, that obviously you will be paid for your for your efforts. Uh, there's no real rush, because... Well, my plans after this trip is done is... Um... Give Kai command of the ship for a while, while I go ashore and... Um, figure out where the fuck these druids are. And then when the time comes, when I do find them, you know, convince Crimson Lotus to allow me to use the trident for good. Could you suggest maybe just to foster more of their trust and goodwill, we can still hand over the trident ASAP, but then they give it back to you once you've Located the druids, and that way, yeah. then use them right back. Because I feel like yes. if I were in that position, I'd be much more likely to accept that deal. Whereas if you're like, I'm just gonna hold on to it until I find them, they no, might. That's a be good more idea. That's a good idea. What happens in the interim? 
It's a good idea. My plan was to kind of reside in one of the safe houses until I find them anyway, do my research from there, so that, you know, at least the Tridents will always be in their possession. But, uh, yeah, I could probably hand it off to Elsinil and just ask for it back when the time comes. Not a bad idea. But would you be willing to... I'd, uh, I'd back that, yeah. Back that and perhaps embark with me on that endeavor when the time comes? You know, in exchange for a paycheck, of course. Damn it, I just yeeted my pen on the floor. <laughs> uh, uh, but, yeah, again, as if the condition is they get to hold on to it until yeah. uh, we use it, just because I feel like that'll be in everyone's best interest. Yeah, of I'm course, sure. of course. I'm I'm down. Okay, thank you very much. Um, could you fetch Brooks for me, please? Unless you, you have anything you want to, you know. Nope. Discuss. All good. All good. Very good. I'll go get him. You're doing good on the ship. I uh, really. Uh, it's good to see all of you. You know. Learning. <clears throat> if you say so. Well, really... except for the miss. I feel like I've. You know, at least I've, you didn't I've, miss on I've purpose. I had one. I had literally one shot, and I kind of fucked it. So. Well, at least I you missed. Uh, at I least agree. you missed an accident, unlike your friend. I, yeah, I guess. Technically, a breach of contract. I could sue. Honestly, I'm very confused because that was a, a bit of a role reversal moment. Because usually, she's the one who's all for jumping into stupid situations, and I'm like, "Hey, let's not." And she so, kind of. It's kinda been a weird herself. day. She's kind of fucked herself as well because, like, Elazen was adamant on signing a contract, and she disobeyed a direct order. I could sue her for this. This is true. <laughs> Not sure. going to, because politics bore me, but... I'll, I will tell you, if you try to, she will use the words diplomatic immunity, assuming that means she's free of anything. So, good luck. Have fun. I'm good. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, I'll go I Just, like, like, ta like, tag Ethan or something. To undeaf him. So if I just type it in chat. Yeah. I tag him or some shit. Ethaniel! Oh, he's not looking! He's looking down! Ethan! Ethan! Oh, wait, I think he's looking now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. There we go. Okay, bye bye. Hello. Yeah, so oh, Wait, I don't need to undeafen anymore. Nah, yeah, right? you, can, you can stick around. Yeah. Hell yeah, the baby, let's go. Yeah, Daigon comes to fetch you, Brooks. Signs at me, or. I'll, I'll just come tap you on your shoulder and then just do. Like the the like thumbs over my shoulder, like towards her quarters, like your turn. I will sign. Thank you. Nice. Okay, I'll go see the captain. I guess. All right. Have a seat, Brooks. Okay, this is. Oh, well, this is nothing too ominous. serious. I had to threaten Kess that I'd keelhaul her if she would miss on purpose like that again. I know this way direct order again, but you know, other than that. Um I, there, there's a couple of things that I want to discuss with you. Um I reported to uh you know our mutual friend about the fate that befell the weaver and uh he is upset but also worried about the interest the nightwebs have in our little clan, I suppose, and comes with a message to say that we should all be a little extra careful, you know, when visiting safe houses, when talking about things regarding our organization, just be a little more careful than you would normally already be. So don't blurt names out in the open. Yes. <laughs> but also, you know, when you're going to a place that you know is a safe house, make sure you're not followed, make sure you don't look out of place, all of that, you know. All the paranoid shit we do anyway, because we're... Yeah, but just yeah. like, just, you know, dial it yeah. up to 11. Um, I have a question. Uh, I don't know if I discussed this with you, but I did mention it to some of the group uh, when we initially met. Um, I intend to use the trident, or intended to use the trident to get back at those druids that um, shipwrecked me and Jax all those years ago. I don't know if, if you were there for that conversation. I was, I'm pretty sure. Well, obviously, with my membership in the Crimson Lotus, um, I'm, I'm, I'm building a case. 
to try and convince Elsinil and his excellence of, of my plans with the Trident. Uh, you know, convince them that these druids are evil, they're killing people, they're killing innocent people, whether it's pirates or not, doesn't matter. The killing. Um, the, 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 they pose a threat to, you know, the, the, the common folk as much as it... Of course, I'm going to be honest about it and say that it's also a bit of personal payback. But um, would you be willing to maybe, when the time comes and I have to do the convincing... Um, to, um, back me up. Now, Mr. DM. Hello. For clarification's sake, the conversation we had with Elsinel wasn't, don't ever let Captain Vera have the thing. It was, make sure she gives it back when she's done what she needs to do. Uh, yes. Okay. My plan, uh, is to, um... And don't tell him this yet, I want to tell him myself, but when this journey is over and we, we, we go back to Eldilon, I'm going to give Kai the reins of the ship for a little while. And I'm going to go ashore. I'm going to be living in a safe house, a Crimson Lotus safe house near Eldilon, where I can do research. Research as to, you know, try and find these druids, you know, their hideouts. And then, when I do find them, I want to try and convince Elsinil and His Excellence to present me with, you know, I'll give them the trident upon arrival, ask for it back when the time comes to use it, and then immediately return it to them forever this time. Um, and with that, I think I already asked Daigon and Kess, but would you and your friends, you know, would you personally be willing to, when the time comes and I have located them, be willing to uh, accompany me? You've proven yourselves very useful on the ship, and also proven yourselves very capable, insightful, smart, strong. She seemed genuine in her intent. Make an insight check. Sixteen only. Uh, do 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 day twenty. You can read from her face that this, you know, the payback against the druids thing is a very personal matter to her. Uh, whether so that is it's because less about whether that is obvious. because whether that is because of her pride or also just the fact that you know they tried to kill her and she doesn't fucking let that slide. But she's very passionate about wanting those druids gone. So it's not that her goals are misaligned. It's I guess I guess the worry for Brooks is. Like, the, I guess the worry for everyone and the reason why Elsinil was like this isn't a we think she's going to use it for something other than what she says. It's a we think she won't get to a point where she lets it go. Uh, yeah. But she did say that she intends, upon arrival in Eldalon, immediately yeah, turn to it give in it back and then, and then ask for and it then back when the it. time comes. And that's why she's building this case. Like, trying to ask people to back her up. And that's also why she's asking you... <laughs> Because she's also asked Diagon and Kess, and she's going to ask everybody, but like people that seem trustworthy, and especially a few members being part of the Crimson Lotus, to like be there when she uses it to assure that she will return it when she's done. But yeah, she seems genuine. She seems like okay. she just wants... I mean... Her, she wants her payback, and she wants revenge on these druids. But at the same time, when that happens, she also gets rid of a threat to other people besides just herself. A threat to people on this on this in this realm. Which also kind of lines up with, you know, the goals of the Crimson Lotus in a way. I mean, I I will happily back you up and come along for the ride. I would maybe expect that there'll be some conditions if they don't just outright say no. Mm hmm So. Whatever I... it takes. I just, I, I need, this is something that I've been thinking about ever since it happened, and I, I need this closure. I, I will back you up on the condition that whatever they decide is what we go with. Of course. Because my membership of the Crimson Lotus means a great deal to me, and I won't do anything to jeopardize that. Except maybe Keelhall 
Kess next time she disobeys a direct order on my ship. But other than that... That's not jeopardizing your your membership so much as you could kill Holler for nothing and Elsinel would probably find it funny. Well, you know, I like to think that um, anywhere else I am in the world, whatever I do has to make sure that, you know, it has to not go against the Crimson Lotus, but if a fellow member of the Crimson Lotus disobeys direct orders on my ship, then I have the right to punish them as I would a non-member. If you didn't treat her the same as everyone else, it would be suspicious. Exactly. So next time she disobeys a direct order, she's getting keelhole. And I will laugh at her. <laughs> right, um, that is it. If you have anything to discuss with me, uh, now's the time. Um, could you go fetch a Lazarin for me next, please? Uh, yeah, sure, I can go fetch a Lazarin. No, I don't think I have anything to discuss. I will go find a Lazarin. Okay. Now everyone, now that the secret talks are over, everyone's um, going Aye, aye, aye. I'm going to find a Lazarin. You mentioned that Celeste uh, came out of her room for the meeting and then... Yeah, she's just chilling at the kept. like at the, the front of the ship. On the bow sprit. Okay. Bow okay, that's fine. Uh, while everyone else's talks happen, I'm gonna do some fucking... That's fine. We'll get to that after everybody shit. talks, uh, though. Yeah, no. I'm not gonna go through it now. I'm just letting you know. Because that might even be post-break. Okay, yeah. I'll go find the Lazarin. Is he asleep in his bunk? You're fucking damn hammock. right he is, baby. I am going to cut one end of his hammock. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Cut the hammock and he just... Right, <laughs> specifically the head end so that he just drops. He just... <laughs> I have I have a question, DM. Go on. <clears throat> uh, technically my rapier of warning. Oh. Go on. The, I mean... It says when combat begins now. You could argue. Not attacking you. I'm attacking. No, that's I'm not, an attack no, no, no. is happening near me. <laughs> I'm joking. No. <laughs> what? No. What does a hammock get to its initiative bonus? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> negative twenty. <laughs> yeah. So you just the last time you wake up from just. Oh. Oh. Ow. So. If I have to stay awake all fucking night waiting for something to break. So do you. It's just you're waiting for people to break. Also, Captain wants to talk to you. Oh, God, okay. As I get up, I'm going to cast some ending on the uh, hammock to tie it back up. <laughs> nice. I'm going to wait until he leaves the room and cut it back down. He's such a fucker. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> you know, all, that, all that's going to do is mean when I go to bed later, I'm just going to pull it back up again. I'm gonna, you know what? No, fuck it. I've seen him mend it. I'm going to cut it in such a way that I don't cut it all the way through, but it's frayed. <laughs> I want it to break in the middle of the night, baby. I wouldn't fucking look either. Right, I'll go to the captain's quarters. Lazarin? Hello? Seat? Okay, thank you. I'll sit down. Um, I have a question. I that, might have an answer. That contract we made up uh, at the yes. beginning of our adventure. Yes. Was that all up in court? <laughs> you know, say, say well. somebody... Disobeys a direct order while she signed a contract to be a part of my crew, you know. <laughs> Asking for a friend. Well, it would depend if the break of the direct order was intentional. It was. She admitted if... it. Okay. Why well, do I feel like I know who this may have been? Oh, I don't know what I don't know what she did, for the love of God, uh, but doesn't matter. I, 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 but, I'm joking. She, I'm not actually going to push press charges. Oh, I know, but so according to theory, according to Brooke, she would just yell diplomatic immunity over and over again, and it seems like she a would. Uh, yes, she would. Right. Anyway, um, I have a question. Okay. Uh, a couple of questions, actually. Uh, Kess told me that you have the ability to send messages to people on distances. Is that correct? That is correct. How many the... times would you be able to do that? I can only really do it twice per day. Twice per day. And I sort of have to know the person. Not fully, but I'd have to sort Would of... Would you be able to message me? Yes. Okay. What I'm thinking, when we reach our destination, um, you lot will be going on land to find, you know, wherever this trident's being guarded. Uh, I'm sending Kai with you, as well as Celesti. Celesti uh, has some experience in, in, in that field. You know, with her obsession with the stars and whatnot, she's she's 
explored, you know, abandoned religious sites, temples, and whatnot. I think her experience in that field might come come in handy. Plus, she's a pretty pretty nasty in a fight, to be honest. Um, I would request maybe uh. twice a day would you be able to every say are you the only person in your group that's able to do this or is there others I know him as far as I know can okay it does it will tap me out quite heavily of my mind just powerful magic Shit. I will say that it All is right. no mean feat okay Eight hours into your journey on okay. land, would you be able to just give me the all? We're still alive. Yes. All right. If I um, may ask, why um, won't you be joining us on land? Because I don't want to roleplay two characters at once. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> imagine. I just don't like you guys. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sending Celeste being my second in command as my as my envoy, right? I, uh, you know, I need to make sure. You know. Not to say that with Kai also gone, somebody has to make sure that the rabble here keeps, you know, keeps the ship afloat. Yeah. So uh, that's why I. Uh, will remain on the ship, but yeah, so eight hours into your journey, just give me the all, still alive. And then, whenever you feel like, you know, the next point in your trek there is that you can spare the resources to give me another heads up, say like another eight hours from then, or the next day, whatever it is. Just try and keep me in the loop so I know, you know. You just need a little nudge to know that we're alive and we're Yeah, because the second I don't hear from you for like over a day, I, I'm fucking off. I'm getting back up. <laughs> I see. I thought you meant you were just going to go and think, well, oh, this quest's done. No. Well, that's about your revenge. No, 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 no. Uh, on that note, you were there when I discussed my original plans with the Tridents, yes? Yes. Getting back at the people that shipwrecked, almost killed me and Jax, and killed my entire crew all those years ago. Um, when the time comes, and I say I, I, I locate these these people. Um, trident or no trident, I do intend on taking the fight to them. I've already talked to Brooks, Kess, and Dagen about this. I'm going to ask this question to everybody just to get a head count. Um, would you be willing to exchange some payment, of course, accompany me? You've proven yourselves quite useful on the ship and quite capable, smart. I mean, aspects and abilities that I would most certainly find useful when the time comes. nothing else further, more pressing matter came up at the time, I'm sure that our skills would be available. Good to know. Thank you very much. Just make sure I got parchment and paper. Of course, if that makes you feel any better, of course. <laughs> Gladly sign out a contract. <laughs> Pencil pusher. Um, I know I... <laughs> Alright, um... Laugh. Anything else? Anything you want to discuss with me while you're here, or...? I don't know. I'm more than content with how everything's going. Very good. You have a good nap? Wonderful, thank you. And I'll tell you what, it'll be very better again soon. <laughs> Manning my station perfectly fine. Yeah, well, as long as people know where to find you, you're fine, I guess. Exactly. All right. I need to be well-rested to do my medical duties. Don't want me making a mistake now. Depending on who. The patient would be, I suppose. <laughs> Are you saying Jax can go or Brooks? I, mean, he's... <laughs> I feel like it hasn't outlived his usefulness, but I mean, he's on the edge, right? <laughs> 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, um, make sure to tell him that. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell him myself, don't worry. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> now, alright, um, in that case, could you bring me Davian, please? Of course. And I will, uh, I will leave, and I'm going to, I'll, no, I'll, I'll start to climb up the quarry's nest. I'll, instead of shouting from, from below, I'll, I'll see what the height is like. 
I mean, I'll fucking hate. I'll just lean down yeah. and watch as you I'll start making your fucking way up. <laughs> I'll fuck up like, come here. <laughs> yeah. The uh, captain wants to speak to you. Were well, you coming all the way up or are you going back down? I mean, I'll probably come up up. You know, someone's got to man it, right? Keep a nice look out for you while she's gone. Now you're rate. that owner. He's got no respect. Well, no. I think... <laughs> Maybe only might get lonely. No, fucking come on, because I've got to climb down. <laughs> just, like just like me. Give <laughs> yeah. my hand up. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Shuffle around all the way. Yeah, yeah right, just don't, the... don't fucking touch anything. And I'll just make my way back down the ladder and uh, make my way to Captain's Quarters. I immediately sit down and go for another nap. <laughs> That's fair enough. Evening, Navian. Have a seat. Evening. Uh, how would you say... The first few days of this uh, journey, you know, how are you liking it? Oh yeah, I think it's going all right. I'm settling in fine, and we've had one casualty, sadly, but I think in terms of the things that we've gone through, that's pretty good. I mean, yeah. storms and fights and yeah, you all did whatnot. really well during that storm. You're really uh, natural almost. Uh, yeah, just it's it's good. You you have a very keen eye and managed to spot a lot of things. Uh, in time for us to prepare for it, which is good. Um, I have a couple things I would like to discuss with you. First things first being, um, you were there when when I discussed my in, in, initial plans with the Trident, right? The the druids that shipwrecked me and Jax, killed the entire crew, you know, the whole revenge thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, that is still on the table, but um, whether I'll have possession of the Tridents or not, I plan on... Um, Doing my research, you know, finding out where these druids reside and take the fight to them when the time comes. When I find that out, you know, fuck knows when that will be, but it's going to happen. Um, would you be willing to accompany me on said journey? You know, in exchange for some payment. Um, you all, your, your entire group, I've asked this question to everyone I've spoken to so far. I'm just going to, you know, ask you the same thing. Um, your entire group has been has proven to be very useful, you know, smart, insightful, uh, some of you very strong, some of you very capable with the magic arts, and those are all abilities that I feel like will come in handy when time comes. So uh, the, uh, if you would like to, I, uh, I would love to have you there and, uh, you know, on that endeavor when the time comes. Just throwing it out there. Well, I imagine that there's... No chance Jax isn't going to be pursuing some sort of vengeance, given. Yeah, I mean, the it's, not, it's not just, the... you know, you're not just helping me get closure, but it's also Jax, I yeah, suppose, in that sense, yeah. Um, he was as much of a victim In that case, as... I mean. I think I owe him no small repayment for his part in our journey so far, and I sort of idly kind of run my fingers through the chain around my neck with the tears of Kosuth on them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would gladly oblige wh whatever the case may be. Good. Um, in two days, we'll, we'll, we'll reach our target, uh, the island, the small group of islands where somewhere this, this, this trident will be hidden slash guarded by whatever fucking champion or champions, who knows, of Umbali reside there, and um, <clears throat> I, I spoke to a Lazarin about this already. Uh, I spoke to everyone about this, but besides a Lazarin, is there anyone else in your group that has the ability to... I don't know, convey a message on a great distance? Fuck if I know. Not me. That's all I can tell you. Fair enough. Well, I asked a Lazarin. A Lazarin said he can do it only twice a day, so I, I asked him to, you know, periodically... <clears throat> Let me, you know, give me an update, you know, a, a live check, if you will. Um, so that I know that if you guys go quiet for longer than a day, then, you know, it's safe to assume that you didn't make it. Uh, other than that, um, let me reach land. I'll remain on the ship, but I'm sending both Kai and Celesti with you to accompany you on ground. Celesti is quite experienced uh, in that field. Uh, as well, of, as part of her obsession with uh, the stars and, and temples and, and whatnot. 
That way, you know, somebody has to stay on the ship to uh, keep the rabble in line, and that'll be me. That's going to be in two days. Right? Hmm? I said underst understandably, of course. I mean, if you're sending Celeste, then you would have to stay on board the ship, keep everything ship shape. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's see. I think that's it. That's all I really want to, wanted to uh, discuss with you. Do you have anything? No, nothing in particular. I mean, as long as I'm doing a good job so far. and Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. All of you for that all matter, right. except for, well... Never mind. Except for... Well, small instance of somebody disobeying direct orders, which I nipped in bud. But other than that... Interesting. Yeah. Very much so. It doesn't have anything to do with the whole... missing a ship that's 90 feet away. Perhaps. Perhaps. It's taken care of, though, don't worry. Oh, well. <laughs> it's nothing... Yeah, I'm sure... I, 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 I completely understand you'll have, you know... Disciplinary... Whatever. Put a little bit of ribbon on the side, you know, can't do anyone any harm. Anyway, uh. Yeah. Threaten to kill Hollow if it happened again. Is that too much? Uh... How barnacly is the whole look at these days? It's not been clean in a while, I'll tell you that. That might be too much. I would actually kill Harla as long as she believes I would. That's that's more than enough for me. Well, she can't drown though, so you know, you can always just dunk her underwater for a while. Oh, you're giving me ideas. Anyway, I will make it back to my post as I have a Did strong you, um... feeling that there's a stupid little cleric asleep in it. Could you fetch uh, Jax for me, please? Oh, right, yeah, of course. We and I'll, uh, I'll head out and go looking for Jax wherever he may be, presumably somewhere up on the on the bridge. <laughs> Doing navigator things with Kai or whatever those guys do. Jax's yeah, meeting is not going to be about strategy. They're just going to bone. That's all it is. Dude, none of you guys have asked questions, so none of y'all know. <laughs> Jax! Uh, yes. Captain wants to see you. Uh, okay, I'll head Don't on. Don't be there. silly, wrap your willy and all that. I don't know how you do it, see, seaweed. What? How's your pull-out game? <clears throat> and remarkably better than yours. Oh, I don't have any kids. That you know of. True. True. I still need to write home. Right, have fun. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll climb up. I'll Fuck. climb up to the crow's nest. And... Uh, you know what? I won't wake a or not. I'm just in the fucking middle of the crow's nest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm like, three quarters this fucking. What's yeah, the weather snoring? like, Dutch? Uh, pretty clear nights. <laughs> nah, damn it. <laughs> What's uh, I'll head, I'll head to the captain's quarters. Jax, have a seat. Yes. <clears throat> uh, what, what's this about? To be quite frankly, I'm quite disappointed in you, Jax. Didn't know you had it in you. No, I had what in me? You know what we do with mutineers, right? I know you've been scheming. Oh no, she gonna spank him. And Celestia wouldn't talk. There's no way you found out about that. In the peg in peg she just leg. she just laughs. All right, in all seriousness, um, a couple days, we'll reach a destination. Celestia and uh, Kai will be joining you and your friends on land. I'll remain behind to uh, you know, man the ship while the higher positions are uh, off the ship. Um, do you? Are you able to, you know, convey messages on greater distances? I don't remember. Um, about as loud as you can shout. It's like there's a no. Um, it's a shame. Well, what I discussed with the last one is going to have to do with them. The occasional, hey, we're still alive, by the way, you know, would be nice. Don't want to spend days circling the islands. If you guys are already dead, you know, bit of a waste of my time. Oh, I'm sure someone will survive. Probably Daggin, she's fast. She seems very quick, that is true. Yeah, if any of you could outrun death, it's probably her, to be honest. Um, Sometimes I blink and she's across the yard. That's... Or maybe I'm sleeping, yeah. I don't know. Um... Other thing. Um... 
I already discussed this with the majority of your friends. Uh, everyone, actually. You're the last one I talked to. Well, boring. Kai, but... I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna involve Kai in this. Uh, for other reasons. Um, when we reach Aldilon, I intend on staying ashore for a little while, doing my research. And I'm going to locate where those druids that did us wrong all those years ago reside. And I'm going to take the fight to them when I find out where they are. Uh, the research part I can do on my own, but when we when I learn where they reside, I'm taking the fight to them. You in? Payback and all that? Well, uh, my priorities have changed the last That's few so. years. Um, if the party was you know, all of them said yes so far. for hire or whatever, we could potentially come help. But Yeah, you're the last uh, one I talked to. All of them have said yes, pretty much. Yes, yeah, so, well, if they're in, uh, I'll gladly go with them. Just, I won't be seeking revenge or anything like that. Fair enough. I figured maybe you would want that chapter closed. Maybe I'm a little more obsessed with it than you are, but uh, I figured I'd still, you know, give you the chance to uh, close, get some closure on that whole front, since they did try and kill us. I'm not so sure they're targeting me, per se. Hmm. And... Target a ship, you target its crew, right? And then included you. Uh, yes, I suppose. It's just Marissa changed my life views. You've changed, you know that, Jax? I do. It's wisdom with old age and all that. Uh, mm, I don't think it's the old age. Apple. I think it's the people you've surrounded you with. Going a little soft. Oh, you mean these nitwits? You, you can say that all you want, but you're going a little soft, my friend. You care about these people. Uh, Be honest with me, you care about these people. I care about as far as I can throw them. Trying to convince me or yourself? Can't it be both? I suppose so. <laughs> it's good. It's good. You surround yourself with capable people, and, uh, well, let's just say that as much as they make fun of you for being old, which I'm sure happens on the daily, I think the feeling's mutual. I think they care about you as well, so there's no shame in admitting that you have a little care, at least, for, for these people. I'm not so sure Cass does. I don't think she has feelings. Oh, she does. She does. All right. Um, that's it, really. Um, anything else? If there's anything you want to discuss with me, now's your chance. Well, other than that, fuck off and uh, get Kai, please. Is there anything else to discuss besides the large warship that we should be watching out for? Well, that's assuming that's what the rest of your friends are doing, no? I would hope so, but I'm sure Lazarin's probably sleeping. Bit of a lazy one, that one. <sighs> but I'm sure Davian's keeping a good lookout. Good. All right, well, in that case, could you just fetch Kai for me, please, and, you know, continue as uh, Absolutely. I'll, I'll take over the helm while he's away. Sounds good. I'll go to Kai. Uh, Kai! Uh -huh. uh, the captain's requesting your presence. I'll uh, keep us steady while you uh, talk with the captain. All right. Sounds good. Close down. Evening, Kai. Hey, Captain. Have a seat. Yeah. And she'll, like, get up and she kind of walks around the table and gets behind you and just puts her hands on, like, your shell, like, on your shoulders. Like slaps the shell with her with the, whichever side doesn't have the fucking coral sticking out of it. This bad boy can hold so much talk. <laughs> you. I think this shell have impressed me with your, you know, your, you, with your capabilities on the ship over the last long time. And um, well, let's just say that when we reach Aldilon after this adventure is over, I'm going to be leaving the ship for a while to deal with some personal matters, and mm -hmm. ship needs a captain. Which, if you're willing, I would like to assign that role to you. To be captain of the porcupine until my return, of course. Sounds good, Captain. Thank you for the trust. No worries. You've uh, proven yourself time and time again. I don't know how long I'll be away for, but, just, you know, I'll... Uh, Make sure to find a way to, you know, contact you 
um, when the time comes, but uh, assume me gone for at least a good few months. Anyway, we keep in touch so I know where to... Uh, I'll be in Albion. Just any letters and... you want to send me, just send them uh, to uh, to the mug. Okay. Good to know. All right. That's it. Back to your station. Chop, chop. Okay. The guy stands up and when he walks out, starts mumbling something about hmm, maybe some green cells when I'm captain. Don't you fucking dare. You, maybe. And then he just walks off. All right, and as everybody gets back to their stations and everybody had their little, little chat with uh, Captain Vira, <clears throat> a few hours go into the into the night, and we're, we've reached like three, four a.m. If you were, if you will, and the water around the ship starts to bubble and gets very oh, uneasy. Oh. And on your starboard side, a ship just. <laughs> Ascends from the depths. Can I slap the laser. Crew of like 50 <laughs> skeletal pirates manning the cannons and just like at you from, from the deck. Cannons aimed at the ship. It seems that the second sign has arrived. And that's where we're going to take a break. Ooh. Oh. It's the apocalypse, boys. Let's go. Yeah. How, how far away is the ship? going to die. Uh, about 200 feet. The fucking. Good to know. So mm -hmm. meme is now more Fucking than Kai's gonna go ramming speed. Yeah. What? Yeah. So uh, we'll be back <laughs> in a few minutes, guys. We're, we're, on our, we're on our break here. We'll be back in uh, five minutes for some for some ship combat, baby. Let's go. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Hell yeah! All right, catch you guys in a few minutes. Stick around. Uh, you know, have a stretch and all that. But do come back in a minute, in like five minutes or so, all right. for uh, part two of today's session. Thanks for being here so far. Appreciate you. Brb. All righty. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. Hey. You've really put the fucking cat amongst the pigeons with the whole fucking, hey, you can swap shit around levels wise. Wait, why? Because it's fucking like me doing a think thonk. I mean, yeah, it's up to you. You don't have think to. Think about it. Think -thonk. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of want to. <laughs> then think about it. You have two weeks. It's plenty of time, right? Fucking. But like, I gotta ask you some shit. I don't, <laughs> That's fine. Mm, I don't know why, but I can't pick a different. The I can only pick. College of Compulsion or College of Law again, and I'm not sure why. Oh, do we not own College of Glamour, or has College of Glamour I been do. taken out? Isn't, isn't Glamour Cauldron? Tasha's Cauldron? Uh-uh. No. I thought it was like the Xanathars or something. Mm. It's one of those, but, but I mean, I the fact The fact that I don't have access to the College of... Like, sure. I don't even know what the College of Compulsion is, but... Yeah, College of Glamour is uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Which we should have, so mm. I don't Oh, I don't maybe know. because the character is set as inactive in uh, the current oh, campaign, yeah, maybe that's, that's why. It. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why. So I'll activate him after the stream, and then we should yeah, be fine. Okay, okay. Alrighty, so, gamers, your second sign has arrived. A uh, large ship has ascended from the depths with a large crew of skeletons seeming seemingly uh, manning their stations. Cannons at the ready. At first things first, before you even get a chance to react, this ship is going to fire three cannon shots at the porcupine. Uh, da -da -da -da. Look. Oh, the ship and become kept nothing a little bit. <laughs> and uh, they are aiming for the sails in this particular instance because they want to make sure oh. that you can't run away. Oh, that's okay. That means that I can uh, hang the green ones. First one misses, so the first one just goes... <laughs> like, goes between the two masts and just... <laughs> in the water behind, like, on the other side of the ship. Okay. Second one does hit uh, one of the sails. It hits the uh, the no. sail behind the helm, Kai, so the back the backmost sail. Oh, no. uh, do, 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 do. I need to, like, I need to fucking touch it down because... Ship has like fifteen different points where oh, it can hit. This would be a lot to keep track of. I feel like. Yeah, and like each point, like each, like it has like several parts that it can hit, and each part comes with its own like AC and health po and hit points and and whatever the fuck. So I'm just gonna quickly. Okay, porcupine. Sail one, sail two, sail three. 
the hull, the helm, and the weapons. Okay. The helm has uh, weapons. Boom. Okay. So it hits the back okay. of the sail for what damage do cannon do? Mines. 5d8. That's so much damage. That's oh, enough. Damage. Baby damage. That can legitimately one shot me. <laughs> don't don't headbutt yeah. a cannonball. I mean, to be yeah. fair, anyone that headbutts a cannonball and lives to tell the tale, I respect. You know what I mean? Like, fucking a just getting hit in general by a cannonball fucking like eviscerate you. Oh, there's people that got shot with them. I fucking lowball it though. 20 points but, of damage. Like, less powerful cannons than ship cannons. So this cannonball just goes flying, hits the base of the, the, the sails by the helm, and you can see some of the, like, uh, Kai, assuming that you're, you know, you're at your station, you can see mm -hmm. some of the wood crack, but the sail doesn't go down or anything. It's still intact. It's just, it's beginning to crack a little bit. Okay, okay. Third one also misses. So only one of the three hits. Uh, yeah, okay. Instead of having everyone go on separate initiatives, because this is naval combat, I'm going to roll initiative for the both ships, and each Early ship turn, combat. each turn of the ship just gives everybody on the crew a full turn so what order it goes into doesn't matter it's just a matter of what ship goes first essentially and then uh, okay. we'll, we'll we'll see from there and should we have initiative roll for like if oh, you want shit. to do an initi initi initiative roll for who goes first on a ship turn yeah fuck it go for it we'll, we'll do that as well just for just, the sake of like uh, that makes it less chaotic yeah for the sake of that yeah, yeah. so yeah. firstly i'll just say i'm going last at this point <laughs> <That's the one laughs> all right so the Ship no. rolled really low, or the enemy ship rolled really low. What's the initiative bonus to a fucking sailing ship, dude? Who knows? Not minus mi zero. minus two. <laughs> so. Oh well. Then. Ships, ships apparently it's a it's initiative. It's just as fat, it's just as dexterous as I am. Uh, yeah. Porcupine goes first in the initiative order. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! When you as dexterous I, as a ship. I, I guess yeah. because Davin's next. I can't give him the bonus, right? It's too quick. Need to be like it's too quick. quick. Yeah, yeah. It'd be no. funny if I just slapped you awake and you immediately gave me visual yeah, and blessing. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So can we just do some initiative rolls from your end then? Um, twenty plus. Daddy twenty. Okay. Fifteen to twenty. Uh, nineteen. Sorry, also was that nineteen? Is that three nineteens? I got a nineteen as well. Yeah. No, three nineteen. Plus four? Wait, yeah. what did you roll? I got eleven plus eight. What'd you roll? Sixteen plus three. Nineteen. Nineteen. So nineteen, nineteen, nineteen. Four, four nineteens. 19. Holy fuck. I and I got a seventeen. Jesus so I'm Christ. Also right oh. Oh. Laura, Laura gets a really high roll and she's going. Fuck me. Um, I know. Sorry, sick. Wow. Davian, nice. what's your dex? Plus three. No. Is that higher than Wait. all the other three? Mine's plus yes. three. Uh, Sixteen dex. Mine's seventeen. Mine's sixteen. There you go. Why don't we do it on initiative okay. bonuses? I, my initiative is plus 12. 8, so okay. it'd be nice That's if we went on initiative okay. bonus. Initiative but my deck score's higher. Okay, so we should uh, yeah, be but I'm okay, more okay, alert. We'll do that. Initiative bonuses. So we have Davian with plus oh, 8. Plus 3. Plus 3. Plus 4. Plus 4. Kai? Plus this one. is fucked. Plus 1. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Brooks. Brooks, then Elazarin. Elazarin. Kai. Kai. Alright. I have advantage on the And then me. Go. And then. Dagon. With a 17, right? Yes. Uh, what did you roll, Jax? Five. Yes. <laughs> Captain Vera also gets... I have a four for chip. Four for chip. Vera rolled a natural 20 on her uh, initiative. Uh, and we'll give Celestia the fucking Celestia is gonna get involved as well. Fuck it, why not? You know, I have the sheet open. Fuck it, dude, get involved. Um, oh, yeah. With a 15. Great. Okay. Uh, so with that said, it is the porcupine's turn, and we're going to start off with Captain Vera. Vera is immediately going to fire one of the uh, because the cannons are below deck. She she runs over to one of the ballistas and is just going to fire one of the ballistas, and she's going to aim at the helm 
of the enemy ship. Let's try and dismantle that as fast as possible so they can't... No, no steering. Smile. Natural 19, so that's definitely gonna hit. Beautiful. Uh, 3d10 damage. Where's my d10s? Help! I'm panicking! Panic! There we go. Uh, for a total of 15... Bang average. 15 points of damage. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry for the slow start, but it says a lot for me to like make sure that I write down it's and fine. shit. So just to bear with me. You good? You good? Uh, um, boom. All right, so the helm of their ship takes 15 points of damage, and that's Vera's turn. Kes. Uh, I'm gonna follow after her lead and fire at the helm then. Uh, what are you firing? There's another. The cannon that I am next to. Okay, so you already, you're, yeah, I mean, you probably would be at your yeah. station, yeah. So yeah, fuck it. Okay, you're below deck. You're at the cannon. What are you going to fire at? The helm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Roll an attack. Just uh, roll a d20 and add five, please. Cool. 30 20. 30 20? That hits the helm. Uh, would you want to roll damage as well? Yeah, why not? Uh, 5d8. Oh, so we're starting to do the thing again. Oh, okay. Thanks for the for the heads up, James. Appreciate you. I didn't even notice that Laura froze because <laughs> I was so like busy with all my <laughs> fucking shit. This is the uh, how much? Thirty three. Thirty three. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, is that your turn? Yes. I don't think I can do anything else. Okay. Davian, you're up. What do you want to do? Right. So I'm up in the crow's nest. Mm -hmm. Roughly, how far would that put me from the deck? How far is this ship away? The ship is 200, 200 feet away. Oh, right. As, oh, that is a range for me to fire, to, to fire some shots, but... Oh. Oh. The overlay will fix itself when Laura restarts her PC, guys. So just, you know, bear with us. You have the audio. That's, 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 that's more than enough. So, okay. If I was to is just it? shoot at the ship... Mm-hmm. I probably have a better chance of hitting than if I was to aim at an individual crew member, right? Like, obviously. Can I try fire a a fire arrow at their ship? You can always try, yeah. Welcome back, Laura. All right. So yeah, I will. I will <laughs> from the crow's nest. I will knock a a little fire arrow, a little um, a little like metal sort of cage with pitch in it mm -hmm. and I will ignite it with you know a little little control flame or whatever okay. and um, I'll fire a fire arrow at the deck of their ship and see if I can actually I don't know if there's anything specific I should aim for like if there's a gun there, would there be gunpowder on the deck or anything like that no, I don't know no I'll fire it at their sails actually okay Absolutely. The I will fire a fire arrow at the main sail. Okay. So I I'm beyond 100. Yeah. So that would be with disadvantage. It is with disadvantage. Correct. Um, uh, beyond 150. Sorry, but I mean, screw it. That's a fucking two. <laughs> so ten to hit. Not as bad as miss as you would uh, would imagine because of your ridiculous uh, to hit bonus. You fire an arrow and it just like it barely misses the sail and just into the water behind the ship. Just tss. anything else you want to do next time? Um, bonus action. I think. Actually, no. Th hold on. This is always this is always a weird spot. Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to use my bonus action for Onu to fly over there. It's just for him to do actions. It's just for me to tell him to attack, yeah. So, 
Odom is going to fly up from the crow's nest and just like 60 feet towards them. Okay. And with my bonus action, what's the range of Hunter's Mark? Only 90 feet? Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Do I have anything <laughs> fun? Do I, anything fun I can do? Not really. No. No, that'll be my turn. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Brooks. Brooks. Well, Brooksy bullshit. I mean, what do I do here? Oh. There's, two more ca There's two more unmanned cannons down below. There's another unmanned ballista on the deck. There's an unmanned mangonel catapult. Do I jump on a cannon or, or do I prep for when we get hit? Fuck it. It explodes. I like explosions. <laughs> I'll have a cannon go. All right. Yeah, so you uh, aim the cannon. Uh, are you aiming for a particular part of the ship, like the helm or a sail, or are you just going for the hull? Just... I would like to aim for their cannon deck, specifically. Okay. I would like to, if there are crew manning the cannons, I want to fuck them up. If they're yeah, not, I'm going to hope to hit something explosive. Okay. Uh, yeah, roll d d20 and add 5 to hit. 13? You're aiming for their weapons. Let me quickly check what that particular AC is. Uh... Okay, I'm going to give you this. It misses the weapons, but you do hit just the hull in general. Cool. Because of the uh, the roll you had. So, uh, roll 5d8 for me, please. That's a lot of d8s, mm -hmm. Dad. That's a, that's good. Uh, that's 14, 24, 31. 31 points of damage to the hull? Yes. You just fire a cannon and you aim for their for like the cannon uh, the cannon ports uh, that are aiming at you you go a little under that and just strike a hole into their like bottom into their bottom deck and what you assume will be taking water so they're going to have to use people to make sure to like either fix that hole or start getting the water out of the ship so i mean, you know you're doing your thing Perfect. anything else Brooks wants to do that you know saying that that was your action and you move uh... to get to the cannon you have a bonus action if you want to no I'm going to do Rage for a cannon. <laughs> Man. It's technically bludgeoning damage, so technically, <laughs> you know. Uh, no, that's that's. Brooks cheesy, could headbutt a cannonball and survive if he rages. <laughs> Good Brooks tankish cannon shot. What, 5d8? 5d8. Half, plausible. Half, it's plausible. Yeah. I mean, if he takes enough monk levels, just deflect <clears throat> missiles. Oh my god, do I you mean, imagine? I can do- could, Do you reckon- Okay. We like could try deflecting a cannonball. A cannonball. I want to do Dude, that. That's insane. Uh, <laughs> all right. Next up is Elazarin. Oh, that's me. Uh, how far on the? How far up is the is the crow's nest? Fuck. Uh, let me quickly check for you. I know the answer is high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like old. I, I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, uh, 60 feet. 60? Son of a bitch, it would yeah. be. Hmm. 66, actually, but I'm running it down to 16 because it's easier. Oh, fair enough. Um, is there a way that I can... Ah, no, there's fucking no way. It's fucking... I was going to try and be like, can I get within 30 feet of, like, a lot of people? And I'm fucking 60 foot up. So I could come 30 feet down, but means they'd have to be, like, right underneath me, right? Pretty much, <laughs> For yeah. It's not very any realistic. Any sort of distance. Yeah. Not very realistic, unfortunately. Because people but if I get... Out. Also, your, your climb speed isn't your movement speed either, so... That's also it a fucking thing. fucking isn't. How, That's how, also how a thing. How do you it's, work out climb it, speed? It's half, I'm pretty sure. Unless oh specified God. otherwise. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's how, half on the specified, how, otherwise, yeah. How quickly do you fall 60 feet? Oh my god. I mean, this man's about to plunge the, 60 feet, instant. break falling both his legs, and then put his dome yeah. So, yeah, you could fall, <laughs> you'd be on the deck, just, poof, there it is. How much movement speed does it <laughs> Huh? How much well, movement speed does it like fucking right? jumping up at the top of a mark? Mm, I'd say nothing. Because you're punishing yourself enough. No, because it'll still cost half your movement to get up, right? Like, is it, is, it's a D6 for every 10 feet fallen, right? So you, you, you're taking 66 damage on the fucking chair. Oh, God, that can knock me unconscious. <laughs> Just rage, pussy. <laughs> Nicole could survive it. <laughs> Nicole could very much survive it. Nicole would just rage and do it. Um, <laughs> hmm. That two goes weeks, that... two weeks. You have the chance to. Uh, do all that. Two Wait, weeks. You don't I get have... my power trip fancy back. <laughs> you don't have slow fall. I don't. I mean, I was gonna. Ah, that that changes a lot of things. <laughs> Listen, just don't do anything. It's almost as if someone might got... have feather fall in the group. I won't... We've got a yeah, lot of time for you to get some shit done. Just yeah. Just like... take levels in monk and get slow fall. Uh, I kind of need this done like straight away. What do you do, Koiba? What does the last one do? <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. How far away? How far is the ship? Two hundred feet. Fuck it, okay, there's nothing I can fucking do. I'll right, you, we've got time. We've I'll got spend time. as much movement and whatever actions, bonus actions, all that as I can to climb down safely. See, I'll this is why we have the sprint rule. Because sprint rule is when you can, like, use action, bonus action, reaction all to right. go, like, 120 feet, I think. Uh, well, with your dash. Or, hmm? or I dashed. <laughs> How far down does that put me? How far? 30, 30 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Can I take 3d6 damage? <laughs> Backs of 18. Technically, like you I slide halfway down and just let go. Yeah. Do I see a Lazarin jump? Uh, he hasn't jumped yet. He hasn't jumped yet. I'm not jumping. Okay, let me know if he jumps. Okay. I mean, yeah, go well as no. Hmm. You get halfway down the ladder to 30 feet above the deck. Ah, oh, fuck it. At that point, yeah, Lazarin's been like, just let's go. <laughs> Oh my so, God. Jax, you do see a Lazarin like oh, cast Featherfall. Is that, a, is that a reaction? Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Okay. You so, see. Featherfall just makes him, you know, descend slowly and just boop. Yep, till he's safe. So, he just said fine. There you go. So, you you jump and, like, the initial 10 feet, you're like, ah! Oh! And then suddenly you feel yourself, like, slow down and you're like, oh. And you open your eyes because I kind of imagine a Lazarin's, yeah, like, instinctively, like, I've got go for the tents of like this is gonna hurt, this is gonna hurt, this is gonna hurt. And uh you're, you you just you just look around and you just see yourself slowly floating, descending down to the deck, and you can see Jax still like, you know, aiming his hand at you. So you, you get a sense oh, of like what what's is, happened. Does he have a cool invention for it? Oh does he? Does Jax have a cool invention for it? Crash mat. No, this one's just <laughs> magic. I um <laughs> just crash mat. Yeah, dude. Fucking crash mat shoots out of my armor somewhere. I don't know from where. Make it your oh, imagination and wow with that one. And just Out wraps, of his ass. and just wraps around you. You're like, wraps you're around like him, wrapped dude. around in this this like blanket of safety as you just as it just slowly pulls you down and you just slowly and it and after you land it, it just makes like the rolls. truck backing up noise too. It's like <laughs> <laughs> And as you as you it land it just slowly off. wraps itself up and just shoots back to Jax. It jumped from her height. Um and that'll be my turn. Because I've probably okay. used my to the bit Uh Kai. Okay. Okay. As a pirate. As a pirate. I would know what happens if you get a ship closer by. I reckon it's just you are more... The chance of getting hit by cannonball increases a bit. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. safe. Safe to say. Safe yeah, assumption. Okay. Yeah. Except when you have castle cannons, then you'll somehow still get missed. Still not get hit. Still miss. <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> would I be able to get the ship 50 feet closer so we are 150 feet away um let me see because this is technically the ship's turn so yeah you can move the ship the ship has, the four friends. has a movement speed of uh, yeah five miles per hour so um, i'll say that you can move it 50 feet in the span of six seconds yes okay would that count as my action or do i have an action i'll say that that will be your movement my movement, okay. Yeah, because instead of moving Good. yourself, you move the ship. I'll say that, that okay. that's a fair trade, I feel like. Because 
eyes on the move anyway, so that's good for me. Mm -hmm. There were people on top of the deck, right? Of the other ship? Yeah, skeletons. So I will grab from a little pouch uh, seven very sharp thorns, lace them in his hand, okay. because now he's 150 feet away, makes a movement and casts a spike growth on top of the other <laughs> ship. Okay. That sounds cool. What does that do? Um, so that creates um, a 20 feet radius and it turns the ground into, uh, you see, uh, hard spikes and thorns come out. Um, and it basically makes that entire area difficult terrain. Mm -hmm. um, and when a, a creature moves into it or is within it, it takes uh, 2d4 piercing damage for every 5 feet they travel in it. Oh shit, okay. Um, it is camouflage, look natural, but if you don't see it, you have to roll for it. So if they see it happen, they see it happen and then disappear. Okay. And if they don't see it, they have to make a, uh, and they walk in, they have to make a wisdom saving throw to see if they are, uh, if, if they can see if it is dangerous or not. Okay, is there a particular area on the ship that you want that to happen? Like, is there a particular area you have in mind, like near a weapon or near the, like, uh, where? Where are the most people? Can I see that or is it just too far away to actually tell? Um... You see on the top deck, like on the top deck of the ship, you see roughly mm -hmm. 20 skeletons. Uh, the majority on the side where the cannons are. Uh, the other sense. side of the ship, obviously, not many people there because there's nothing for them to aim at. So, of those 20 skeletons that you see on the top deck, like, 12 of them are, like, collected around the cannons. Some okay, of them carrying yeah. cannonballs, some of them already loading up the cannons for the next, like, barrage of, of, of firing. Uh, but the, the majority is surrounding the cannons at that point. Okay, in that case, I would like to... Make the center point like 15 feet away from the cannon so they are still inside the radius. 15 feet away from the cannon? What do you mean? That's a 20 feet radius uh -huh. from where I say it is. So it's like yeah. Around. So if it is 15 away from the cannons, it will still mm -hmm. take the cannons and a little bit extra. Yeah, plus you can more place on the other so side. You can, you can place it in such a way that you can, you can have two cannons. And like the people surrounding it, all yep. covered by the or in the yep. in the terrain, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Um, they only take damage when they walk, right? Not initially, or just being in it. Uh, no, when they move into or within, it takes for every amount of yeah, so every five move, feet it travels. So, so if, if they, move, if yeah, they okay. if they start moving to places, they will take damage. They're skeletons, they're not very smart. Do they see this happen? I rolled a natural one and a natural two, so I'm just gonna say that these skeletons oh, yeah. do not know what the fuck's happening right now. How are you? Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Hey. Uh, that's it. Dagon. Hey. Um given I don't know if the ghosties are corporeal, things would even hurt them. And I missed before when but trying they're skeletons. to shoot things. They're not ghosts, they're skeletons. Oh, sorry. So then, then they're already dead. I don't know if things aren't. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. Is there another um, ballista to, up top deck available on the side where the enemy ship is? Uh, not a ballista, but there's a mangonel, so it's like a like a catapult I'll, type. I'll, type I'll of... use that. Okay. And I'm just trying to hit the any part of the ship because I'm remembering missing earlier and being like, I'm not very confident, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> All right. So I'm not. I'm not aiming, like basically. I'm aiming for like the middle of the hull. I guess it's the biggest, broadest target. But <laughs> sure. Uh, roll a d20 and add five. Add five. Mm-hmm. Oh, <gasps> I rolled a natural seventeen. Twenty-two. Nice. That hits. Uh, roll five d10. Oh, I got, I got out five d8s. I was so ready. And Mangonel has a higher damage output than a cannon. That's interesting. Woo! Okay, hold on. I have three like d10s, and then yeah, I'll grab so. two more. You're, you're a d10, and, and you're, nope, you're not a d10. So and you're aiming yeah. for the hull, correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. 8, 14, 15. I guess the trade off for the 17, mangonel is that if something is within 18. 60 feet of it, it cannot hit it, whereas a cannon would be able to. I rolled two I ones and two on these d10s. F. But so for a total of 18 damage. Hey, it's damage. Yep. All right, so yeah, you just let the let the mangonel go, and this big rock just slams into the side of the hull, just creating this large hole, and you can see that you can see the ship taken in water. 
Good shit. Anything else you want to do? I think... I might... Uh, I don't know in case these skeletons try and fling some shit at me. I'll spend a key point to do patient defense. Okay. In case of any incoming projectiles, I guess. Make myself harder to hit. Fair enough. That's my turn. That's now Celeste's turn. Wait, and... does, does it take an, is it an action to reload the mangonel next turn? Uh, funnily enough, um, it doesn't say it's per se. It just says here... Uh, it's a bonus action. I'll reload it instead of doing patient defense, but I'm quickly, assuming it's an action. Uh... Uh, hold on. Uh, five E. I'm gonna whip out my dungeon master guide real quick. This, hold on. Two seconds. I, need to, I, need to fact check I did it. I stumped the DM. I win. That means we all get inspiration, right? Yeah. Actually, no, because then we get inspiration every time someone tries to fucking grapple. True. Reminder, while Dutch is looking things up, if anyone wants to see uh, a DM who knows even I need to fact less, check something real quick. Join us on Friday. Wait, Laura's plugging. I get paid. Oh, sorry. Yo. Yo. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, do you like fact checks? Well, you could sponsor uh Sponsor <laughs> I love Yo, food. do you have a chip in your windshield? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a chip in your knowledge? <laughs> uh, according to the Dungeon Master's Guide, it takes an action to reload. That's what I figured. All yeah. right. So, yeah, I'll stick with my patient defense for bonus action. Then. Okay. I am Very done. good. Uh, Celeste has a turn, and Celeste's on the deck, and she's not going to run for any of the weaponry. Instead... She, what's the range on that? 120 feet. Okay. Interesting. Okay. You see Celeste, you know, being a triton. She jumps into the water. Oh, yeah. And she swims her full speed, so 30 feet closer to be within 120 oh, feet for... because Kai positioned the ship 150. So when she swims there, she's exactly within range to cast Tidal Wave oh, at third level. Let's go. So she conjures this big wave of water that just crashes down into uh, like on, on the uh, on, into the hull of the ship to try and just do as much damage as possible. So you guys look, you guys see this Triton just just not think without second guessing, just running up, jumping into the water. You see her just shoot thirty feet towards the ship, and suddenly this just big tidal wave. Appears and just rams so into the side stuff. of the enemy ship. Damn. Is DM about to fucking caduce us his map Mercer when it comes to ship combat? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, Dutch didn't watch that. I didn't watch campaign two. So, uh, uh, Caduceus does exactly this to a ship at the start of a combat, and Matt just turns around and goes, Right, I will throw away all of these ship combat rules. Oh, oh really? yeah. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, fucking he, smashes he, it ashore. He made, he made the whole massive, encounter. He made a massive, yeah. like, ship combat rule set of these cool dynamics oh, and stuff. No. And he just fucking smashes it against some rocks. It's like, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> he's like, I mean, he's like, well done being initiative for, like, being a... <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 21 points of damage from that wave just slamming into the hull, and she is going to remain just kind of chilling in the water. She, she'll, like, dip her head under the water to not be a target, and that's it. Um, Jax. Is there any weapon that hasn't been fired yet? Uh, there's one more cannon below deck that has not been fired yet. There's three cannons, and two of them have been used. Okay, okay. Um... Yeah, except Pepperbox is not. Oh. She with disadvantage. Fuck it, dude. I'm gonna take two shots to my Pepperbox at disadvantage because it's out of like the first range, but within the second one. What are you running to shoot at? I want to shoot at the guy at the helm of the ship. 
Okay. I've ever steering it. Disadvantage, but yeah, sure. Yep. Okay, natural 20 on the first one. Oh, shit. But. I mean, it's. It, okay, well, that one's not as good. Okay, so that's a, um, a five to hit? No. Okay. Second shot. Okay, this might hit. 16. That does hit. Your second shot hits. So the first shot, you fire the pepper box and it just misses. The second shot, however, hits. Connects with the man behind the helm. So that's a d10 minus two. So eight damage. Eight damage. Well, funnily enough, due to there being so many of them, they're very squishy. So you just fire your pepper box and the bullet just straight into the side of the skull and the skull just pops and the skeleton just falls apart so for now th that ship does not have a helmsman for like a brief period of time let's go all right all right that, that's my, that's my turn this chip oh i'll use my bonus action and do a defensive field actually okay does chip want to do anything uh well of course chip does what chip does best he uh help will someone. help someone because it's a very helpful little parrot it will uh sit on uh on jack's shoulder and just uh, make sure he will help with the next attack. Okay. Because that's what Chip does. Not sure how that's going to happen, but the uh, Paratoros. It is now the turn of the enemy ship. And the enemy ship is going to... quickly check the range on that, actually. Because you're 150 feet away right now? Yep. Okay. Stop. Stop. Does he fire the cannons to the to the B or to the red? Um You can see some of the crew that were already busy. They rolled three more cannons. They basically took the cannons. And because there's so many of them doing this, they took the cannons from the other side and, and rolled them towards the side where the ship is at. Uh, that does mean that a lot of them are going to be walking into that fucking shit fuck. So, um, and they walk 10 feet. So, just roll me, roll damage once, and it will just affect all of them. Okay. So, for 10 feet of movement within that zone. Oh, let me double check that I do it. Is 2d4 per 5 feet. Yeah, so 44. 44. 4. 7. Thirteen. Thirteen. Off. It's that that alone clears out about six of oh, the yeah. uh, crewmates to just but the cannons do make it there and the ship is just gonna fire three more shots this time just going for your hull that's a hit it's also a hit all three of them hit so the ship hull gets just three cannons just doof, doof, doof. All three of them just crash into the side of your ship. Uh, that's 5d8 times 3, so... Do I have that many dice? Fuck no. It's not bad. Oh dear. Uh, 12... We're gonna die. 16, 20, no, 25... Don't. I have a brilliant idea. 25... 33 God. 39 Dude, 49 shift boat. 39 Dude, 44 fuck. 47 49 Just, stop. 50 stop. 53 56 Dude, stop stop rolling 62 <laughs> 70 <laughs> points of damage to the hull oh, oh, one I over a, what do I you have, I have to say can we um Dutch how about you did one less damage <laughs> Sorry, unfortunately, no nice number for Can you Can I today. use my reaction to negate the damage by one? Yeah. Nope. Can I be uh, the cool for a second? Spirit shield the shit. No! For one uh, time. So, <laughs> and, and as that happens, the impact happens. Two of the cannonballs hit the middle deck, so there's no immediate water seeping in. But there's one cannonball that does strike the lower deck. And for those that are like on the middle deck at the cannons, you can hear water just start pouring into the lower deck. And some of the people down there start yelling, We'll take it on water! To kind of alert whoever is nearby of that happening. Uh, and that is their ship's turn. Back to the porcupine with Vera. Who's going to use her action to just reload the ballista. So that's going to be her action. And that's all she does. 
Uh, Kess. I imagine I just have to reload the cannon, right? Yeah, it's an action to do that, yeah. That's my action. Alrighty. <laughs> uh, Davian? Back to see uh, Um, How close are the ships now? 150. I can roll without disadvantage. There you go. So, uh, That's yeah. Crazy. I'm going to light That's another like fire arrow and... You're going to aim for the main sail again? I'm wondering what advantage that would get us. I mean, it stopped them from fleeing, I guess, if, like, the whole thing goes up in flames. Can I... Would I be able to spot, like, gunpowder batteries or, like, ammo, like, stuff like that? Shit that might be really worth hitting with some fire? Make a perception check. Oh, 21. With the movement moving of the cannons to the other side, they did also place a couple of uh, powder barrels to, because for a cannon to fire a cannonball requires gunpowder. Yeah, uh, I'm... So there, you do spot some powder kegs uh, next to the cannons, yeah. I guess I'll aim for, I'll, I'll aim for a powder keg with this... Uh, Go for it. The next fire arrow. Oh, fucking balls, dude. Oh. Fuck it, it's terrible. Uh, 10 <laughs> to hit. Misses, unfortunately. Aww. Yeah, fuck. Does it land anywhere useful? No, 10 is uh, too low, so it just like it doesn't reach the ship quite. It just like poof, right in front of the ship. Okay. Um, you said it's 150 feet? Correct. So we were 200 feet. Yes. Onu moved 60. Feet. Yeah, so Onu was 140 feet away from the ship. But also, like, like I guess. 140 away from their crow's nest, like, height-wise. Yeah, so... So if it wants to go down, it's gonna have to travel a little bit extra, but yeah. It. He. It. Yeah, what the fuck, fuck dude? You. What the fuck the up? thing. Um... The it's a fucking fire. spirit, dude. Frick the off. creature. You're a fucking creature. <laughs> <laughs> it's true! I just had an idea. Creature-type humanoid? I just had an idea, but mm -hmm. I'm like, mm. <laughs> okay, Onu, Onu is gonna fly back to me. Uh huh. Do I have a good bonus action? Anything? No. Onu is gonna fly back to me and can he take a torch out of my backpack? Sure. As like my bonus action. Sure, sure. Okay, so he's flown back sixty feet. He's taken a torch out of my backpack, mm -hmm. and that will be the end of my turn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brooks. Uh, like a good, considerate friend, I'm not gonna bother reloading the cannon. I'm just gonna leave it unloaded. Okay. And I'm gonna start heading to the lower deck. Yeah, and as you get to the lower deck, you see, like, where the impact site is, there's just this big hole. Uh, when you get down there, there's already a couple of inches of water just collecting in the hole. It's, it's filling up quite fast because of how big the hole is. Um, you do know that the supplies to repair the ship are also on, in this, like, in this area, so you don't have to go far for those. With 40 foot of movement, do I have enough movement to get down to this deck, go get the supplies, and then come back to the hole, or am I going to have to dash or step of the wind? Because I will step of the wind if I need to. You're going to have to do that then, yeah. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, I'm going to use a key point to bonus action dash. Okay. Uh, to go get the fucking shit and come back and use my action to start repairing. Go for it, yeah. Uh, just make me a... um. Fuck. We'll check what I make you do last time for this, because this is a very, like... Straight... Was it straight decks? Or straight... Could have been. Yeah, oh, maybe. Light of hand or something like that? Um... Say sleight of hand. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm very good at sleight of hand. When I think of sleight of hand, I always think of like sneaky hand movement. It's also just... It's also just being able to work with your hands properly, right? And that's also kind of a way to interpret that. So yeah, sleight of hand. Okay. Um, That's a 23. Yeah, you uh, you you manage to to just within your action you start fixing the hole. The ship is no longer taking on any water. Price is averted for uh, now. Cool. 
nobody's down here with like a cannonball sized hole in them or anything right? no the cat the ca you see the cannonball is like in the ship just kind of like rolling around just... <laughs> it's like it's there no. all right back to him free so ammo, back to back. Free ammo i guess pick it up and throw it back up onto the gun deck <laughs> okay so Kess and Daigon, you look behind you, you see this cannonball just being flung up from the lower deck. He's like, lands behind you and just starts like rolling the way the ship like rocks with the waves. So it just, it just goes left, right, left, right. Um, is that a turn, Brooks? I mean, yeah, that's all you really can do. So yeah, that is your turn. Frick you. That is my turn. Uh, <laughs> the Lazarin. Quick question, when does the ship move? Uh, Kai basically decides Kai's that. turn. Because he's the one on the helm. Right. Like the ship moves once per turn, but because Kai is the one yeah, steering it, I'm saying like Kai is the one that, that makes basically that dictates makes, that. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, you know. Yeah. Shame. And if Kai doesn't uh, specify what he where he wants the ship to move, it just goes yeah. 50 feet in. Okay. The direction. I will then in. hold my action. Okay. Until I'm. I want to walk. Okay, actually, I want to walk up to the point where I can be closest to the other ship whatever direction however we're look however it looks like we're steering yeah, the, we're the, the starboard side and we're going starboard side yeah i'll get to the point where i can be as close to that edge sort of hanging on mm -hmm. and i'm going to hold my uh action to be when i'm within uh 30 feet of the crew okay oh yeah i'll do some math here real quick just for the sake of uh let me do some math here real quick. Any chance it will that be me wasting my turn? Uh, well, I thought the ship only moves like 50 feet a turn. I was just only moving 50 feet, I don't know. Yeah. So if, if I do well, full 50... That's what, I'm doing. that's what I'm calculating right now. Hold on. Okay. It moves about 44 feet. I did it earlier. Oh, there you uh, go. So yeah, 50 feet is being generous. Okay. 50 so, feet oh, per, 50 okay, feet per 6 seconds, yeah. So it's actually... So okay, cancel that. I, I thought, accidentally kind of was on the ball there with my calculations. Yeah. I thought no, it was I thought it was a little bit more. Um, that's fine. So that's going to be a waste of a fucking turn. Uh, never mind. I will instead. Who's in 30 feet with me? Uh, hmm. Captain Vera. Uh, David's still in the crow's nest, right? Yeah. So I'm so on deck. Again. Probably we're pretty close to him. Yeah. So whoever is controlling the... Someone... Uh, Daigon was... No. Who was doing the mangonel? I was. Daigon. That was Daigon. So Daigon, Captain Vera... Kai being at the helm as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to see them. It's a radius, right? So it doesn't go through floors, right? Let me just double check. It is. Like I don't think it goes through a floor. No, this is a... this is something different. Oh, than want to do. Okay. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, creatures that I can see. Yeah, so that would be Vera, Daigon, and Jax, and Kai. Uh. Fuck it, it's worth doing it. I'll cast Wait, no, not Jack, Jack's below deck because he was at the cannon. Never mind. Kai... No, I wasn't. Wait, I no? shot my pepper box on top of the deck. True. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Kai, Jax, Vera, Daigon. I... Fuck it. I think it's going to be worth it. I'm going to cast Water Walk oh. on myself and all them. Okay. Ooh. This last an hour. Spicy. Do we... Do we concentration? Know, like that's happened or do we just... Not like if we happen to fall in the water, we're just... Ritual. I could do it as a ritual. I could take 10 minutes. <laughs> Wouldn't he technically be able to see Celeste as well since she's in the water in front of him? She's more than 30 feet away. I bet she hasn't. I think she only swam 30 feet. She swam up 30 feet to be within 120. So yeah, technically, she would be, within 30. Would be able to cast on her. I'm not going to cast on her because she's underwater. She did dip her head underwater. Yeah, true. Oh, she's, that's fair. I mean, she's also underwater. If I cast water, because she just instantly bounces up 60 feet. <laughs> so I mean, but yeah, we she's don't... target practice. Yeah. Do we know this is what we feel? Uh, I guess we won't really know what this means. This nope. is a, in case of emergency I mean, I'll, situation. This is, I'll allow Lazarus to use like his bonus action to announce what he's doing. If he oh, wants fuck to. no. I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. Okay, fair enough. This, this, no, this is a... Are... Fair enough? This, this, is, this is a... They'll figure it out. <laughs> it's uh, I just quickly go, right, <laughs> cast okay. it, yeah, and okay. then just sort of like... Fair enough. Can we um, take fall damage if we hit water now, since it would be a solid surface? Yes. <laughs> You're yeah, welcome. Yeah. You motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but you don't drown. But at least you don't drown. That is true. <laughs> I have a cap of water breathing. I'm fine. That is also true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it your turn, Lazarin? This motherfucker. Uh, All right. Yes, it is. Kai, what would you like to do, good sir? Um... I saw Celeste seek as tidal wave, right? I, that was, I could see that. Yeah, absolutely. 
it. Well, you saw Celeste jump into the water, and then suddenly and then, a tidal wave appeared and rammed the other ship. Yeah. So, yeah, put one on one together. Yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> I will follow her lead, so ship 30 feet closer, and okay. then the rest just horizontal, so we're now 120 feet away from them. Okay. Just and ran her over. Nah, so that's easy. She's like, oh, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Star bitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I will do the same. I will also just uh, cast Huddle Wave on the ship. Uh, just the hull? Shit. Just the hull in general? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Let's see if I can do something with that. Some of that. You want me to roll to hit, right? Uh, for this, in this case, yeah. I know it's only a saving yeah. throw, but like it's it's a ship, so I'm gonna. I, I, that's what I did for Celestia as well. Just make this a yeah. hit so. yeah. with your uh, normal cast modifiers. Oh no, yeah, no, that will hit. That will hit. That's uh, that's eight damage. My spell attack. That's plus seven. That's twenty five to hit. Yeah. I reckon that, yeah. Uh, I reckon that yeah. hits the ship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I guess. Close enough. It's four. <laughs> it's twelve. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Seventeen points of damage? Yep. Alright. Oh yeah. Okay. Anything else you wanna do? Uh, no, just making sure the ship just keeps going where it should go. Locally, locally. Uh, because the, the mess behind me has been hit just once from just the very once. start, yes. right? Yeah, okay. okay. Um, Daigon. I'm gonna reload the mangonel for my action. Okay. Because I need to do that. Anything else you want to do with your turn? I don't think so, because. It doesn't. It seems like they're firing at other targets. I don't think I want to spend another key point because the patient defense was like, combat's just starting. Not panic reaction, but just like yeah, just not sure out. what's gonna happen. And now she's like, all right, I think mm -hmm. the ship is the bigger priority, not the people on the ship. Like from their perspective. So yeah, I'm just gonna reload the thing, and that's my turn. I think. That's your ready to turn. Fire next turn. Alrighty. Celeste now being 120 feet away and uh, has like the ship, the, the porcupine right behind her. It's gonna use her movement to climb back on board of the ship. And is then gonna, cause she's now still 120 feet away. It's gonna aim at the helm, the helm that still does not have anyone controlling it. And she's gonna center a moonbeam just on the helm. To try and- they walk into it? To try and destroy it. Plus make it so that if anyone wants to try and get into that space, you know, good luck. Uh, which again, because it's a ship, I'm just gonna make it as a roll to hit. I'm bending the rules a little bit, okay, guys? Uh, deal with it. No rules, lawyers, please. Thank you. You're How can you fun. bend the rules when you make the rules? True. That will hit. So you can see this, this, this like pillar of moonlight just poof, smash down onto the ship. Uh, what's what's the radius? A five in a, a five foot radius, just like encircling the helm and uh, like the space around it. Uh, how much health? Oh, dude! And the helm just like shatters into splinters. There's the the the, the enemy ship does no longer have a helm, so no way of controlling where they're going, what direction they're going. Sick. The helm is destroyed, and that's gonna be Celeste's turn. Jax. Um. Okay. So. Is the mangonel or cannon on deck reloaded yet? Uh, cannon was reloaded by Vera, right? Cannons are below deck, though. Uh, there's the uh, oh, Vera reloaded the the ballista she was at on the top deck. Oh, the ballista. That's right. Yeah. So Vera's manning the ballista. Daigon is manning the mangonel. that are aimed at that side. Okay. Um. I guess, and we're 120 feet away now. Yes. Fuck it. Uh, I'll send a couple magic missiles shooting at motherfuckers over there. Okay. Ah. At random, like, skelly boys? Yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. Got nothing better to do. Yeah, those auto hits, right? So no... Yeah, those auto hits, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, so chip. Not even thing this turn. Oh, okay. sure, yeah. 
Uh, 12 points of force damage. Two of the skeletons just burst into just a pile of bones as the magic missiles just... Nice. Okay. Very good. Is that your turn? That is my turn, yeah. Uh, does Chip want to do anything? Yep. He flies from Jax's shoulder to Captain Fiera's shoulder and uh, we'll do his little job over there. Okie dokie. <laughs> for, for next turn. All right. That means it is now the enemy ship's turn. And last turn, three of the cannons fired. The other three that shot before then got reloaded. So three more cannon shots in your direction. Awesome. Super uh, exciting. They are going to be aiming for the Mangonel Diagon is at, the Ballista okay. Captain Vera is at, and the main sail. Of course, the turn I didn't use patient defense. Any any walkers on the ship? <laughs> huh? Any walkers on the ship? Uh, no. They remain because the three cannons were re reloaded the previous round, so they just have to not move. They just just, just, checking. just uh, checking. Yeah. yeah. Um, to hit the mangonel is a sixteen to hit. Does that hit? Yes. It does. Mangonel has an AC of fifteen. Oh. If it hits Oof, the mangonel uh, I'm at, does it do? Is it just damaging the mangonel? Like it's not I'm gonna, gonna say it's just me. damaging the mangonel. You'll be able to like. Ugh. Okay. Like okay. you see it coming, you have you can see the cannonball like soaring in your direction, so you have time to like. Ugh. Or would I have time to jump in front and try and use deflect missiles? Oh my god! <laughs> the wording says. <laughs> You're a fucking it just say you projectile? Can use, You're insane. It says you can use your reaction to deflect or catch the missile when hit by a ranged weapon attack. Okay. I'm assuming um, this is a ranged weapon attack. Would Daigon, knowing how, you know, having seen how devastating a cannonball could be, would she still throw herself in front of it? Because <laughs> she is going to tank the, all of the fucking damage if she gets hit by it. Regardless of the deflect missile working or not. <laughs> I mean, even if the deflect yeah. missile works, like, you're still gonna take a bunch of damage, right? Yeah, because there's no way the deflect missile, like, outlives, you know what I mean? Not at this level. Yeah, because I have compete, to you're, reduce you're it for to zero. Oh, yeah, all I can reduce it by, never mind, is 1d10 yeah. plus 9. Yeah. So, yeah, never mind. Okay. You could roll yeah. 1 on all the damage that I did. That's, 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 that's your one yeah. DM freebie, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> your max, your max you would be, be fair, an absolute fucking suicide. Your max to would be, be fair, 9 I never said I She'd was... Just be pulling I never said I did it. I just asked yeah, if yeah, it's no, possible. No, I didn't what's say the cannonball damage? 5d8? 5d8, yeah. And I can reduce it by at max 19 points. So you'd at half maximum. the damage, essentially. That's, that's if I also rolled a 10 on my d10. Anyways. Yeah, but that's also uh, if you yeah. roll all 10s on uh, his. Or 22 all points oh. of damage to your we'll uh, mangonel. Wait, you only been three damage off. Only been three damage off. He only did 22. He should've, should've done it. Should've, should've done, done it. it. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> you can roll three less. <laughs> the mangonel you're at, Daigon, you can see it, like it it, it's still functional, but it took, oh. a it took a big fucking blow. Is it still loaded? Yeah. Yeah. Catapult, the rocks are still in place. It just, you can see Woo. that like the, the like middle of the construction took a blow and you can see some of the beams have cracked, but it's still functional. Okay. Probably a little harder to move it around, but it's still functional in the position where it's at right now. Um, second one is going for the ballista. It's a 22 to hit, so it also hits. The ballista takes 30... Wait. Quick math. Yeah, 36. That's fucking high, dude. Holy shit. Uh, 36 points of damage. Uh, also still functional, but fucking barely. And the middle sail... That's cacked. Middle sail also hits. Jesus. 26. 27 points of damage. The middle sail. Ooh, I'm marking damage down on the enemy ship instead of the porcupine. I'm stupid. Oh, what a shame. Oh, man. Oh, it's too bad you caught yourself. <laughs> uh, 
There we go. So yeah, you see just Mangnell, Ballista, Middle Sail, like the masts, all just getting absolutely fucking just devastating blows. Um, the other three cannons are being reloaded at the same time. Uh, and that is the ship's turn. Yes. So back to the porcupine. Captain Vera. I mean, she loaded the fucking ballista. She's going to fucking shoot it. She's going to aim for... With advantage. With advantage. And she's going to aim for... She's going to aim for the cannons. Hit the gunpowder. <laughs> with advantage. With advantage makes that a natural fucking 20. Oh yeah! It hits Big the gunpowder. Mommy Vera. Hey, only I get to say that. <laughs> they call it a peg leg for a reason, don't they, Jacks? 17, 34 points of damage to their weapons, uh, which six cannons there. That takes out one cannon, so there's five cannons left. Yeah. And the second, like the second cannon that got impacted by the blood, by, by the by the sheer force, also definitely took some damage, but uh, destroyed one of the six cannons that are currently aiming at you guys. So that's something. And that's Vera's turn. Kess. Um, I'm gonna aim. Um, where did where did Vera hit? I instantly. She shot thought. at the at the cannons. Okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fire your cannon. Roll d20 plus five. Ooh, 16. 16? Mm. Yeah, it hits. Sick. And it was 5d8. 5d8, yes. 5d8. This is not as good as it felt that time. <laughs> 7. 14, 15, 15, 15. 19. 19 points of damage? Mm hmm. Uh, piling that damage onto. Uh, you destroy a, a cannon, the same cannon that was already a little damaged by Vera's Ballista Bolt. Nice. And so that means there's currently, at this point, four cannons still trained at you. Cool. Right. And that's it. Davian. Okay. This is gonna be... complicated. <laughs> so... Onu has a torch. Correct. Can I light the torch and a fire arrow? Sure. Without using an action or a bonus action. Ooh. That's asking for a lot. That is asking for a lot. But because I feel like you're going to do something pretty epic, I'll allow it. Okay. He's he's Kisu's so, boy. He is fire is his friend. Yeah. So yeah. It is I a mean, tinderbox. <laughs> <laughs> magical zippo, mate. Okay, magical zippo. I'll light zippo. both. Cause basically what I want to do we, the ship didn't move, right? We're still 150 feet. 120. 120. Oh my So it changes everything. <laughs> well, that means that Onu is within 120 feet of those barrels. Yeah. If I use my bonus action to command Onu to dash, he mm -hmm. can fly 120 feet. Okay. So can I light the torch, use my bonus action for Onu to dash 120 feet, and drop the torch onto one of these powder barrels. Sure. Yeah. Fuck it. And that's what I will do. <laughs> okay. So Onu... These cannons are very smart. You know, they're not very, very, very smart. So they're not gonna, after every time they use the gunpowder from a barrel, close it up again. So the gunpowder is just there, exposed. Because they keep having to dig from it. Definitely so Onu flies. The cannons aren't very smart. And I was like, what the fuck? Onu flies and just drops the, the, the lit torch and it just directly into a gunpowder barrel and the gunpowder just 
and it causes this like chain reaction because there's a couple of barrels there and they all just as soon as the first one goes the second one goes the third one goes and just <laughs> let me shoot a fucking red barrel like any video game yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. it's literally what this is so oh my goodness well it goes operation turn undead cringe <laughs> Get me within 30 feet so I can turn on dead. <laughs> it just kept me away from the cannons and shit. <laughs> That's the plan. The hull, or like the deck, so I guess it is considered the hull, takes 57 points of damage just from the the blast. Okay. Um. There's loot on the ship. We probably shouldn't explode. And the middle mast, being so close to it, just catches fire. Catches fire and takes another 20 points of just fire damage. And, like, the ten skeletons that were still there on that side all just... So currently, you've cut the crew in half. The ship has no longer has a helm. The middle mass is on fire. And their hull is looking very rough. Taking it on water. All right. Which also means, 30. because you cut the crew in half, their ship can only fire two cannons around instead of three. That's also a bit of a win. Woohoo! Because, you know, to fire cannons, you need uh, people, and more with, people you with, kill. With the success of these the Operation Onu Drop Torch show, um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock a Thunderclap arrow. Mm -hmm. And just wherever I can see the largest group of skeletons, I'm, I'm gonna fire a Thunderclap arrow at them. Okay, yeah, you can see, like, a group uh, of five skeletons that you could probably, because... With the you guys keep cutting them down, the numbers on the deck, the people that were below deck are constantly like going up, so they keep refle re replenishing the people up there until they eventually run out. So yeah, you can you can catch a group of like five skeletons, uh, pretty huddled All together. Right. Loose the thunderclap arrow. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. It's a fifteen plus eight, so twenty three to hit. Yeah, full damage. Um, Any saving throws they need to time? make a con saving throw. 14? It's DC 15! There you go. So Woo! they take 2d8 thunder damage. Easy. Oh, which is only 6 thunder damage. Okay. Loose objects are pushed 5 feet away and they are pushed 5 feet back and fall prone. Okay. So they're just One like. One skeleton just pff, breaks apart. The other four, yeah, they just fall on their ass. Uh, I'm going to give you DM inspiration for that, like for the, the whole Onu torch thing. Hell yeah. Fuck with Hell it. yeah. I fuck with it. That was cool. Hell. All right. Yeah, that'll be my turn. Okie dokie. Question. Yes. Because I don't understand how things work sometimes. Mm -hmm. If they move, are they in my little thing? Or if they move, they take damage because they're thorns and stuff. Um. Yes, but also... Um, no one within that circle, no one has really moved around that much. Um, because they keep getting fucking killed. Um, so next round, there'll probably be some movement in there, and I'll let you know. I have a question also. Hello. Would I do also normal arrow damage with that, or or not? I guess it, it doesn't say an additional, but it's... It's uh, just for the thunder, oh. the the thunderclap arrows in particular, that the, the, it's just like a, a thunderclap okay. that you can just yeah, All right. yeah sure, replaces sure. the the weapon damage. <clears throat> We'd probably shatter the arrow, and honestly. Um. So it's Davian Cern Brooks. You fixed the hole down below. I did fix the hole. Mm -hmm. well, it's probably gonna be another one by the time I fucking walk back upstairs. Well, but... you heard a lot of cracking and crashing coming from above you. I'm going up. <laughs> what do I see on the next deck? On the next deck, nothing. Everything is intact. Everything's intact on the gun deck? Yes. Shit. Fuck it, I'll go up to the next deck. What's up there? Uh, you can see that the mangonel and the ballista aiming at the enemy ship has taken quite a beating. And you also see that the middle mast has taken some damage as well. Some cracks I, in the wood and... Uh, okay, and I didn't specify this. Is it a reasonable assumption that I carried the tools up there? Yeah, Because yeah. that was my plan, but... Um... Oh, God. I'm not going to be... Like, 
in a turn, I'm not going to be able to fuck it. Like, it's not like Wait, a whole where you slap a couple of Real quick, let's reactively roll 2d8. Oh god, why? How much you kill the boat? Uh, an 8 and a 1, so 9. Okay. So you fixing the hole down below deck uh, heals the hole for 9 hit points. Cool. But also no flooding, that's the important part. Yeah. I mean, fuck, like, so bleed damage. I'm not going to be able to permanently fix this mast in a turn, but I can at least try and sh start shoring it up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'll do, because fuck, fuck the weapons. Yeah. We've got spellcasters. Yeah. All right, uh, roll another 2d8. Mm -hmm. I'm spending uh, an action. Do I need to roll the check for this first? Oh, yeah, make a, a little side of hand check, please. Okay. Sorry, a lot going on. A nine. <laughs> nine, ooh. You begin and... You drop a nail and you pick it up and the second time you fucking instead of the the wood you just slam your hammer onto your thumb and just motherfucker and that's kind of it you don't manage to actually pass anything up unfortunately uh -oh. i'm gonna hammer myself in the brain okay that's <laughs> fine okay that's my turn the last room so we're like what 100 and... 120 120 yeah Yep, that would be the case. Huh. <laughs> now, now I have a I have a question. Well, then, bit of a can I guiding bolt the ship? Yeah. Celestine like, Mo Celestine Moonbeam the ship. Like, but I meant more like the effect of guiding bolt would it make the whole ship light up or like uh, the whole in, or... in the rules of like naval combat, I'll allow it because you know the hull has stats. The helm right. has stats. The mast and right. sails have stats. So yeah, in in this scenario, in this context, okay. yes. Okay. How damage for the the sails are on fire, right? So the sails are kind the of middle basically... mass, the middle mast is on fire, yeah. But the other, okay. Yeah. So the front and the back. I don't really want to do that much more damage to the hull. I just want to kind of clear out the crew. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having to do a think thump. So that's fine. Because the fucking hell, a lot of the shit I have is not prepared for range combat. <laughs> it makes me look closer yeah uh fuck it get creative Koiba. that's on. what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> also the one time we finally face undead i'm fucking 200 feet away i'm pissed yeah man. you do be you do I'm be on 20. ship yeah yeah, yeah unfortunately <laughs> we started 200 <laughs> not 30 <laughs> which have been perfect yeah sorry man Just Just climbing kind of that's kind of sick that's the first i mean i'm not gonna like this is fucking Badass, so, right? That's the first thing. If campaign, I was, so. I mean, at least I'm not playing the cool. Otherwise, I'd be doing fuck all at all times. That's turn. true. I'd that's like, true. <laughs> I wait. I mean, in the cool, nah. would probably load a cannon and yeah, just fire a yeah, cannon exactly. or something. Right? Yeah. yeah, I would have explained it in my face. Um, <laughs> or climb, climb in the cannon. <laughs> climb in the cannon. See you through style. Tempt that man. <laughs> see you through style. Um, fire oh, yourself towards the ship. Literally, I will. Hmm. I wait. Are the skeletons quite close together or are they pretty spread apart now? Uh, right now they're a little spread apart because of the thunderclap and also the fact that there's a new like battalion of skeletons getting ready to get to the cannons when it's their turn. So right now they're a little spread apart, but... I will on... How far apart are the cannons? Uh, there's like 10 feet between them. Fuck, that is just out. And there's okay. four cannons left, by the way, because two of them got destroyed already. Right, it's four. On one of the cannons, I guess, I will put my own moonbeam. Okay. Um, to five make foot. It, uh, can I make it so it like basically gets the cannon, like middle point here, obviously gets all the squares around it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's five foot. So one on the cannon and the rest sort of like arcing for anything that's coming towards the cannon. Yeah. That's cool. Do you like that to be cannon one, two, three, or four? Two. Okay. So yeah, you slam a moonbeam now. R roll damage. Uh, I don't think moonbeam, I think moonbeam damage is my first Yeah, but we're, we're doing things a little differently in this, this naval combat shit. So. Woo! Okay. This, is, this is a little more unorthodox than your than your classic oh, D&D combat. Oh, look okay. <laughs> I'm not good. I just, I don't want to, you know, I don't no, want to no, be, fine. you know. Because I fucked you. it up. Well, the first time I used moonbeam, I fucked it up. So mm. I don't want to fuck it up again. I... You're allowed to fuck it up this time damage. because we're doing, like I said, we're doing things a little, little differently to make it a little more. Me. I guess. I don't know. Fucking damage is actually two. Three d ten, I believe. Wait, that depends. I think I cast it at a higher level for her. Hold on. Might be two d ten. I think it's no. I think it's three d ten base. Oh yeah, it is. It is three d ten base. Yeah, you're right. 
Plus anything. Oh, fuck no, it's 2d10. No, it is 2d10. See, I'm not stupid. You're stupid. Smelly. I'm stupid. You I, I was also yeah, looking dumb. at... I was also looking at third level. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's just where my uh, thing was for war war. Whoops. Oh, that is 19 points of damage. You completely I'm destroyed that cannon, my friend. That cannon is no more. Hell yeah. <laughs> but they have three cannons left, two of which were reloaded last turn, one of which has to be reloaded, so they can only... Ah, they can only fire two cannons next turn anyway. There you go. Anything else you'd like to do, good sir? Mm, nope. I'm happy with what I did that turn. Okay. Kai. Um. As we are now focusing the cannons a little bit more, mm -hmm. I would like to, if I can find the fucking spell. Where are you? There you are. Um, just gonna cast Chill Touch. Like a little ghostly turtle hand kind of goes over. Is that and, 120 uh, feet range? That's crazy. Yep. Oh shit. Damn! Damn, yep. son. Chill, right. chill Touch, the 120 feet range spell, by the yep. way. Yep. Touch. <laughs> Touch. Yeah, because like it gets touched by because a hand. Because the feeling that you is conjure, a chill touch. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's not your reaching. Yeah, I funny. understand the name of the spell. You would totally assume it, that it's like it I put my hand on someone, they get cold. But it's just same. I summon the hand, and that touches it. It's wounds, such, though, touch. Yeah, yeah. I Fucking... double check up. I'm also surprised. Like, wait, but yeah. But no, that's it, uh... it, it, the, the name comes from like the fact that they touch this like weird yeah. hand that you conjure up here. Yeah. yeah. So I will. And uh... and it does necrotic damage, mm -hmm. by the way, not cold. Yeah, yeah. Just a really fucking yeah. A nice one. Wizards of the coast, you fucking ding dongs. So I will just see if I <laughs> I'll can. I'll fix it in one D and D. If I can Fly. like squash the the, the 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 head of the cannon to see if I can do this with it. Let's see if it does okay. some damage. Uh, roll damage. Touch. Neither chilling nor touch. Do you want me to roll to hit first? Because oh, I'm yeah. hitting something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I assumed that you already did that. My bad, my bad. No, it's nineteen. 19 plus 7. Yeah, yeah that's 26 to hit. Yeah, 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 I can shoot the manganel again. Yes, you can. I reloaded it last turn, so let's do that. Uh, I added plus five before. Is that changing? Uh, no. For any reason? Okay. What are you aiming for? The hull, because okay. I want to see if I can break it enough. This thing starts to sink. Mm-hmm. That is correct. Uh, that is only a fifteen. Fifteen is the AC of the hull. Oh, I thought it was a sixteen. Oh, yeah. Nice. No, sixteen is for the more precise things. The hull is fifteen. Okay. So roll five d ten damage. Damn. Again, I rolled only one of these. A d10 is above a five. <laughs> That's the lore we know and love. Yep. yep. <laughs> if it doesn't happen on the attack roll, it happens on the damage. Yep. 18. Same number as last time, but different on the dice. 18 points of damage. Okay. I mean, you're slowly chipping away at the hull. Like, I holes are beginning to form. Uh, doing it's, something. It's, it's looking pretty fucking damaged, all right. Again, I'm saving all my good rolls for Friday. That's my turn. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Celesti now has a turn. And she's gonna... Okay. She's gonna look at Kai. And she's gonna yell, I'll allow you guys to converse because of the fact that it's a ship's turn, so I'll allow some conversation. Okay. Do we want to keep destroying it, or do we want to get going? That's not her That's not her voice. Do we want to keep destroying it, or do you want to, keep, you want to get going? I will just yell, destroy! Aye, aye. I yell with Kai, yeah. Aye, aye. In that case... She's not going to cast Gust of Wind to get us the fuck out of there. She's going to instead... Casts Ice Knife. 
Which is... Hold on. Oh, that's a 60 foot range. Shit. You're gonna say fire. Yeah, it is. Instead, she is going to... That's also 60 foot. Welcome to my life. Welcome yeah, to my life. <laughs> Bollocks, bollocks. Dude, Everything bollocks. I have that wasn't like a guiding bolt or moonbeam is 60 foot. I'm like, it's like huh. 60 to 90 feet for everything. Yeah, like, yeah. These magic missiles, like, what uh, And we're still 120, correct? I didn't move the ship at all. Yeah, 120. Yes, 120. Fuck. I have to think about this now. Fuck. Um. Oh, f shitting fuck, man. It's gonna fucking wild shape. Fuck it, bro. Hell yeah. Megalodon. Let's go. Not a Megalodon. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. What's... Crack a reef shark or something. Uh... A walrus. Goldfish. What's the fucking max, like, CR right now for her? Hold on. Two. Probably. Just Probably, uh, yeah, I think same. it's two. Probably it's same as mine, so that's uh, a two. It's divided by three, I believe. Yeah, that's one, one slash two, but that's that's mine. Make one yeah, slash two, one slash two, that's half. half. That's that CR, yeah. 0 0.5. Yeah, okay, unless maybe. you are. I think it's moon. Yeah, Circle of the uh, Moon is the yeah, one that you want to go Right, yeah, yeah, she's not. Uh, she's like instead... No, so it's a half, because that's the same I have. Aquatic is Crocodile or Shark. Oh, she is going to Wild Shape, but... She's going to activate her Starry Form, which is a Circle of Stars Ooh, thing. It's fun. Ooh, her entire body shit. begins to glow. And um, becomes this becomes this luminous, glimmery, uh, like her joints glimmer like stars. Glowing lines connect them, like almost like a star chart. And he uh, is the missing constellation. <laughs> <laughs> and she uses the constellation of because she can choose whether it's archer, chalice, or dragon. And she's going to... Yeah, and she's going to use the Constellation of an Archer. And once that is active, she hops back into the water. Because this was a bonus action, so she's then gonna use her action to dash to be within 60 feet of the ship. While in this, like, starry Constellation form. And that's gonna be her turn. That's sick! Uh, Jax. Alright. Uh, still 120 feet. Which honestly kind of just fucks me. Um. I guess. I'm just gonna reload the Menganel for Daigon. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's you absolutely can. Yep, Alrighty. that's my turn. Uh, chip. Flies to Daigon. And Flies to Daigon? All right. Just the same, and he's going to see, him, oh, see yeah. if he can uh, can help a little bit with shooting a cannon. Okie dokie. The enemy ship is going to fire two cannons in your direction. Um, and they keep on walking. And they're going to continue to try and take out the weapons. So one for the mangonel, one for the ballista. Manganel, natural 7 plus 5 is 12, which is not enough, so that misses. So instead, it'll go low and slam into the hull. For the sake of, uh, you know, just because I said so, to be honest. So... It just fucking came up from there. <laughs> it hits the middle deck, though, so you're not going to take on water right away. So your hull takes... Fucking hell, 15, 18... Uh, 23... 29 points of damage. Wow, what a fucking miss. Yeah, well, it didn't hit the weapon, so... Daigon can still shoot the Mangonel next to her, else it would have been broken. You know, take your pick. Yay! 
Ballista, natural ones, that absolutely fucking misses. Uh, they fight, try and fire the cannon, and it just, it'll be the cannon that's partially been squeezed by the chill touch, and it just, and, boom, and it just, like, it rolls out of the cannon and just into the water. Like, there's no velocity whatsoever. Uh, with that, roll 44 for me, uh, Shatter. Nine. Two more skeletons, just... Eh. Okay. Oh, no, they wouldn't have gone to the fucking cannon, would they? Because I killed it. Fuck. Correct. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so it's back to the porcupine now. Captain Vera. Um, it's going to, yeah, use her action to put another bolt in the ballista. Yes. I do the same thing. <laughs> going to reload your cannon. All right. Hey. Davian. Uh, I mean, at this point... I don't really know how much damage I can contribute to the ship. It's in pretty poor shape, right? Like, uh, yeah, they only have three cannons left. Their hull is looking very damaged. They don't have a helm anymore. Their middle mass is on fire. You, you're definitely on the winning side of this of this battle. Why would you? Why would you say that? Release the Kraken! Kraken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why is it starting to storm? How, how's, the, how's the crew looking, like, numbers-wise? Uh, less than half left. We got this. Yeah, but, I mean, technically, all of them are dead. True. That is true. The undead. I guess when... Uh, shit. I... I I don't want to waste all my thunderclap arrows on a bunch of skeletons that are going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. That's fair. What range are we at? Uh, 120 still. Yeah, no, I'll just throw a couple Eldritch Blasts in yeah, there. Yeah, fuck it. Uh... Screw, screw. Oh, God. Imagine um... having Eldritch Blasts and using a bow. <laughs> One's a 15. Yeah. And then one is an 8. Okay, so you, you hit one skeleton uh, roll damage. Five. However, however, um, all the other skeletons. I'm gonna I'm gonna pump in a uh, an elemental fucking imbue okay. elemental power. Okay, okay, okay. So make a make some deck saves. Natural one, ten, thirteen. So the highest would be a fourteen. The fourteen saves. Okay, so two of them fail, one of them saves. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember if I said half damage or no damage on a save. Hold on. I think it's... I think it might be half. I think I remember it being half. Yeah, it is half. Okay. So... Two... Wait, two fail, one save? Yes. So the two fail, one takes six, one takes five. Okay. And then the save takes four, because I rolled an eight. Okay. And um... the, the main guy takes an additional three fire damage. Yeah, so the main guy plus the two that failed the save, all three of them just pff, blow up. Uh, the nice. one that made the save somehow still standing. Nice. A little charred, but... Um... Oh, fucking Onu's just going to fly down and kill him. Just finish him off. Go for it. Yeah, roll attack. Uh, 11 plus my spell attack modifier, which... So uh, 17... It never has your yeah. like, ship dice tower been more like contextual uh, correct <laughs> right? than now. It's sick. How much was that to hit? Sorry? 17 to hit for yeah, Onu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's dealing... What, D4 plus 5? So... Oh, God. Guy is like, the guy has one HP left, bro. So yeah, he's, okay. He's, <laughs> he's, yeah, Onu, Onu fucking claps Onu his fucking cheeks and fucking destroys the last one up. of that like uh, quartet of skeletons that you were targeting. Very good. Um... Brooks. Uh, uh, from the position I'm in, did I mm -hmm. see any of... I, I won't, I'm in the middle of the ship. I won't have seen shit. You're at the Is man, anyone you're shouting at the about water in the bottom deck? No. Okay. Well, then the holes are probably in the mid-deck, and I don't give a shit about them. I'm going to repair this mast. Okay. Or they're all dead on the bottom deck, and it's full of water. That's Either also way, a that's yeah. also past my... Abilities above your pay grade, uh, yeah. Make another side yeah. of hand check, better but not great. That's a 12. Yeah, you uh, not a great job, but you know, you do manage to patch up some of the like uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the, like tears in the wood. 
Uh, roll 1d8, please. Two. Two, all right. Two. Anything Mechanically, else? I don't give a shit. As long as it looks like to the captain, I've done You're doing something. your job. You're doing your job, yeah. Fair <laughs> Mechanically, I don't Brooks give a shit. Brooks is a minimum wage I might as well live in it. Uh, Elazrin, <laughs> unless Brooks has anything else that he wants to do. Uh, I mean, is the mask done with? Or could I carry on with it? You could probably carry on with it, yeah. But I don't... Does Brooks think the mast is going to come down anytime soon? No. No, 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 no. Okay. Then I'm fucking off below decks. Okay. Elazrin. That's me. That is I'm you. that person. Ah. Uh, fuck it. Moonbeam go burr. Okay. I'm just going to... How... I don't even think I can move as far as I want to. Uh, he's an extra. Oh, 60 feet. Fuck it. Oh, dude. Cannon yeah. number uno. Okay. Roll uh, roll damage. 2d10. Same sort of thing where I'm going to put it so it's like on the cannon and also mm -hmm. on the boys. Uh, only 11 points of damage this time. Um, That's, that's still enough. Like the way I'm doing it is just like... Instead of the Woo! cannons individually having HP, it's just like there's a group of six cannons. Every twenty damage dealt removes a cannon, so you'd remove another cannon from the from the mix. So there's two cannons left. Pretty good. Anything else? Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking. I'm seeing if there's something I can do as a bonus action or some cool shit. It's still 120 feet away, isn't it? Yes. Anyone injured? I don't think so. I think uh, nobody looks very bloody or anything. It's been then, it's been the ship that's been targeted, not necessarily the then people. Then you. Okay. Uh, Kai. Kai is starting to really feel it, so he's just gonna be. Tonight we take no corner, and he just slams the ship completely, four fifty feet towards the other ship. Okay. Kai is going full Barbosa mode on the other. Alright, so you're currently he's, 70, he's 70 feet away from the ship now. As you're getting closer, so that means that the mangonel is still useful. Once you're within 60 feet, that's when the mangonel is no longer uh, longer useful. It, it directionally, is it still useful? Because if he's turned us towards the ship and they're on the sides, yeah, it's like this and we're now going like this. We'll find out on your turn, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, so if that's my movement, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do same old, same old and have uh, ghosty hands trying to uh, squeeze the same or, or a different cannon to see if he can, sure. uh, if he can do something. So that's a uh, 16 to hit. 16, uh, that does hit, yeah. That does hit, good. I'll just again. 2 to 8, that's a 8. And a 5, that's 13. Okay, very good. Anything else you want to do? Put one head on his head, because it's kind of windy and then... That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hold the hat. Steady. Okay, Daigon. Well, since Jack so kindly reloaded my mangonel, mm -hmm. I can shoot it again. Yeah. And I have advantage because Chip advantage. was there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, beautiful. Are are you? Oh no! Did you koi bud? Oh, he didn't koi bud. I I koi bud and both numbers are shit. Oh no! This... Ah, okay, I moved him. It was a four on both dice. Simultaneously with advantage, so that for a total of nine. <laughs> oh, no, no, the uh, the range suddenly being fifty feet shorter kind of throws you off, and you fire the mangonel, yeah. and it's still like it's still like zeroed in on one hundred and twenty feet, so it just yeah. goes wide over the ship. Yeah. Fortunately. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I don't have any bonus actions that help me right now. Because what's the distance? Yeah, that's within 10 feet. <laughs> All right. Well, mm -hmm. I, as a bonus action, just give Jax a really sheepish look and then a shoulder shrug, feeling real dumb. <laughs> that's my okay. turn. Celesti, the, now looking like a, like a constellation, like a celestial body, 60 feet away from the uh, ship, is going to use the starry form archer uh as a bonus action uh and she is going to hurl a luminous arrow that looks just like starlight 
uh, towards the ship's hull. So you see, you see Celeste, and just from her arm, this like starlight in the shape of an arrow just appears and shoots against the hull of the, the enemy ship uh, with a natural 18. So that's definitely going to hit. And that hits the hull for nine points of damage, radiant damage. And then for her main action, now that she's 60 feet away, she's gonna... So she has one extra use of certain spells, and I'm guessing that's just part of her, you know, her being cool or whatever. She's gonna cast a second level... Wait. Okay. Uh, a second level ice knife. So she conjures this big shard of ice and just flings it towards the ship's hull. And it kind of like expands in size as it travels and it just slams into the ship. Um, for 1d10. Normal damage. Oh, that's a 10 on the D10. Pog. Okay. Ship is not immune to cold damage, so it's also going to take 46 cold damage. Nice. Sheet. Get it, girl. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So it's 10 points of cold damage as well. Okay. Jax. Um. Alright. Uh, uh. How close are we now? Uh, 70 feet. I believe it's have to be. Okay, well, I guess that makes this easier. Uh, I'm gonna take two shots on a pepper box at the crew. Go for it. Since I'm now not at disadvantage. Natural 20 on the first. Nice. Again. And an 11 on the second. 11 misses. Damn. Natural 20 hits. Well, that's fine. Natural 20. It's okay. Okay. That's not terrible. Uh, uh, 10 points of piercing damage. Okay. Good, good, good. So another skeleton just goes poof. Nice. Okay. Anything else you want to do? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Chip. Um, is anything loaded at the moment? Sorry. Is anything loaded at the moment? Wait, is Belle talking to us, or is she talking to someone else? I am not talking. Oh, I, thought I saw your mouth move. I was no. like, wait, is she okay? She's going. Uh, I don't believe yeah. so. I believe everything has been fired recently. Wait, yeah. No, I think Kess. You spent your last turn. Yeah, Kess reloaded hers. Yeah, the captain, and right? the captain also reloaded. Yeah, so the ballista and there's one cannon down below that's also loaded. Uh, Chip has already helped the captain. Now, now he goes to Kess and uh, tries to help there. So Kess, you're below deck and just you see Chip, Chip just come flying down uh, to you and just lands on your shoulder. Ready to fire! <laughs> okay. It's not the enemy ship. And the enemy ship does something... You didn't necessarily expect. The enemy ship starts to submerge. It just... You can see that... Out of the crow's nest... This, this white flag... Just appears... And they... You're French. Cowards! They admit defeat. <laughs> Pussies! They, they admit defeat. You've taken Cowards. out... 75% of their crew, taken out their helm, taken out four of their six cannons, they admit defeat, and they submerge themselves back into the water, and with that... Wait! I demand the a rematch. Booty. The what? I have a question. The booty! They can't go underwater! See, they can't just can. dip! Yes, they can! Do that, we get an that, attack of opportunity as the ship... I'm throwing my cap, breathing and fall. <laughs> no, can I have a question. My yeah. moonbeam mm -hmm. is like... 60 foot cylinder. I guess like, well, uh, it's like. Well, roll, roll damage because it's moving, so I'll allow you to be like to like as as it's like leaving the moment you just it's just like scrapes, just like 
as I mean, a ship it's got submerging. 60 feet, like... Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, but I should basically do that in one turn. Seven! Wow! That's crazy, dude. Ship still submerges, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And, and the, 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 the Captain Ferris kind of looks around. I think that's it. I suppose then we have a bird coming tomorrow. And uh, Celeste still like in her, just like she looks like a constellation, just climbs back on board of the ship. That was fun. Woo! What are you I'm just gonna run past as I'm going down. What are you looking at, Jax? Past to fucking fix something. Just. You look cool! What did you do. Huh? Oh, sorry. And she just whoosh, drops the drop drops the sorry shape and turns back into her normal self. Um, I don't know. It's just something I can do. Some druids turn into animals. I turn into constellations. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you be all right if um I ran some tests? Absolutely oh. not. Shit. Keep him away from me. <laughs> Captain Vera just kind of walks in. All right. Good job, everybody. We survived. No loot, but alas. Um, Kai, are we all right to just keep going for a little bit? Or do we need immediate repairs? Kai just looks around and like, we can continue and then just takes the ship back to... Uh... Right. The proper route instead of... Uh, right, I'll take over speed. the wheel for a bit. You guys deserve some rest. It's been a long day for you all. Tomorrow will be our final day of proper travel before we get to our destination, so rest up. And if superstition is to believe, there's a bird coming. More one, apparently. And with that, Kai's parrot lands. This shit. Yeah. <laughs> if your parrot turns out to be the bird that we're worried about, I will... Snap its neck. Oh. And then it will just return. <laughs> I wonder what power it tastes like. And with that, you all uh, get some rest. Uh, unless there's anything pressing you guys would like to discuss with each other. Uh, I mean, we time skipped a little because we were combating and oh, breaking Oh, right. Shit. Yeah, you were going to do a thing. Uh, yeah, so... Mm -hmm. um, while everyone else was in their meetings... Okay. Uh, Brooks <laughs> Brooks is going to go invisible No okay. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to forge Davian's handwriting To write a note Make a Make a Make a check with your forger With your forging kit What That's such uh, a weird thing Because like you I don't think I've do seen my handwriting And neither is Celeste So why would you need I'm to sure forge have, it I've... That's a good point He raises a good point <laughs> I'm sure I've well, seen like... your handwriting Because you've sat in camp And and written in your journal, right? Uh, not too frequently, but I mean, I just seem. Why would you need to forge it if Celestia hasn't seen it either? That's I mean, I mean it's what I was. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong, but for Brooks, it's part of the fun. <laughs> Isn't there a requirement to forgery that you need to have studied something, or is that? Uh, do 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 do. I might be wrong. I might be something as long else. as as long as I've seen an example of the handwriting that I'm trying to copy. I can forge it. Oh. Okay. All right. It's definitely not. It's definitely not glamorous handwriting, but. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's a to Dutch. How it might be a shit forgery. Yeah, well, well again, it doesn't need to be a forgery, but. D twenty yeah, part of the charm. D twenty plus dex plus your proficiency bonus if you're proficient with forging kits. Oh, I am. <laughs> Of course uh, you are. That's a 17. Okay. You reckon it's pretty convincing? Okay. Uh, I've enlisted Kess's help. Okay. While... <laughs> while everyone else is in meetings, I'm going to go invisible. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Kess is going to lockpick the door to Celestia's quarters if it's not already unlocked. It is locked. Is it trapped? No. I didn't think so. Yeah. I she, tra that. she traps her fucking room <laughs> on the ship. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, roll it's a check with frag grenade. Uh, yeah. Check with thieves tools. D20 plus dex plus proficiency. I thought she made her paranoid at opening doors. 
I got a natural 20. Okay, that's open. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is rigged. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go inside invisible. Mm -hmm. I'm then going to plant the note. Okay. I'm then going to wait until Kes gives me the signal that people are, like, nearby to see me, but not enough that they're watching the door. Okay. And then I'm going to use Disguise Self and turn into Davian. And okay. then I'm going to pretend to sneak out, but be fairly obvious. Okay. A couple of Dragonborn crewmates kind of like... Like, like Pink Panther walking suspicious. Man, man, <laughs> give it, giving that like... <laughs> like this. <laughs> Shuts the door. Okay. Uh, DM me the notes that you leave behind. Okay. Okay. And with that, unless anyone else has any, any bullshit shenanigans, um, you guys... Oh, and Elazrin's hammock, when he mended it, I cut it so that it would thread, like, snap in the night. Okay. <laughs> sure, man. Uh, you all... Get your, lo get your long rest. At some point throughout the night, the Lazarus, your hammock snaps, and you just, and you just find another one to lie in. Uh, no, I just mend the same one. He just mends the same one. Oh, okay, I know he can enough. mend it. That's why it's funny. It's like okay. <laughs> and uh, you wake up the next day feeling fresh, long rested, ready for... While everyone uh, else was, lo was long resting, I will have talked to Dashu, but I imagine we'll do that next time. We'll do that next time, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. And with that, we'll uh, end it here, because it's been a... Yeah. A long one. Woo. Good times. Yeah. Good shit. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope Good for combat. Woo. Hope for tabletop Woo. RPGs. Thanks for the raid. Appreciate you, Laura. Thanks for the bits as well. Uh, we'll be yeah. here uh, tomorrow with Divinity or not? Nah? I mean, ooh, ooh. yes. Yeah, should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then tomorrow with Divinity. Discourse. Anyone that feels that feels inclined to be on? Wants to be? Who's had shit happen to them recently? <laughs> had Jackson Soko, or Jackson Soko, Jackson Kai. Uh, had a lot of shit going Dude, on. How there. cool, no, okay, real what? quick though, how cool would it be to get to talk to your own D&D character? <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, like Jackson Kai had some shit happen, but they, they, you know, Soko and Shadow were on Discourse last week, so. Who we already kind of went over that, so. This has had a lot of emotional <laughs> trauma recently. True, <laughs> true. I nominate that. Yeah. Fine, okay, yeah. Are you I available? I think I'm person? around. I think so, yeah. Anyone else that feels Fuck it, dude. Yeah, why not? Yeah, all right. Yeah. We'll have uh, we'll have uh, the, the, uh, creators, oh, actually, the creators uh, of Celesti. Uh oh. what if oh, what if though? Hold on. What if what if though like Cause I don't want to be on two weeks in a row if just in case like you know something happens this weekend with that celestial body. <laughs> No, no, I'll be on this week. I'll be all on this right, week. Right. So we'll have Duke, Bell and Duke uh, this Thursday for Discourse. Hell yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you. Appreciate you. We're going to fuck off. See you tomorrow for Divinity. Mm. See you Thursday for Discourse. And see you next Sunday for another Dungeon Select, where the party is getting close to their destination. Exciting. But apparently, uh -huh. there's still some bird issue to deal with. And we'll, uh, we'll tackle yep, that next week. Apparently. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace out. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. -bye. Later. Bye. See ya. Du -du -du -dum. Bom, bom, bom. Gone? Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Du -du 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 -dum. And it's now slowly like a fade out. It's just like. Bom, bom, bom.